It has been anticipated since before the season started. Between Oregon and their goals, it seemed, was a trip to California. Now, eight weeks later, it's no different. The Ducks with four straight Pac-10 wins and the California Bears eyeing their first Rose Bowl since 1959. But Oregon, confident, poised, facing a huge opportunity and familiar with the Bears, having won seven in a row over Cal and not losing in Berkeley since 1993. You know the saying, the games to remember are won in November. Well, memories start today, and it doesn't get any bigger than this. From Memorial Stadium in Strawberry Canyon, it's Oregon, it's number four California, and it's coming up next on the Oregon Sports Network. Top San Francisco Bay in the distance, Oakland, and then Berkeley, California for a big one as we look down on Memorial Stadium, a crowd of 60,000 expected today for the Oregon Ducks and the California Bears, the winner today in sole possession of second place in the Pac-10 into November. Hi, everyone. I'm Joe Johnsanti along with Anthony Newman. Hey, this is why you play it. Great <laughs> atmosphere today. Big game for both these teams. A huge game for both teams. These teams know each other. They respect each other. Two teams coming toe-to-toe, -to -toe, throw some serious blows this afternoon. When you talk about the respect, I think certainly you look at the California the offense and what they've been able to do and the respect starts with Aaron Rodgers his numbers are unbelievable Anthony right now he's at 71 percent completion rate so if the draft NFL draft was today he would be the first quarterback taken that's how good he is he's a leader he's smart and, and I tell you what he's taking his team to a whole, whole nother level now while Oregon might try to contain Rodgers the guy they're really gearing up to stop is J.J. Arrington the leading running back in the Pac-10 all you can say is look out you better bring 11 guys to tackle him because he's breaking tackles all day long 100 52 yards per game that puts him right there up at the top of the conference and certainly one of the best running backs in the nation now for Oregon they have a lot of guys coming home today and when you look at the rivalry games the Washington yeah. the Oregon State for many Oregon players this is the one they circle on the schedule a lot of guys from De La Salle Cameron Colvin coming in needs to contribute today Joe anytime you come back home to your home crowd to your fans to your many old girlfriends you want to show <laughs> off a little bit and that's what he's gonna try to do today Cameron Colvin has emerged now for Oregon Anthony with two touchdowns against Washington Washington. They will need him today. Demetrius Williams is going to try to go with that toe. We'll see how it goes. On the defensive side, Jackie Bates also played at De La Salle. A lot of pressure on the corners today for Oregon. Well, Jackie Bates is looking for redemption. He got taken out last week. He wants to have a big game in front of his hometown fans. Does it get any more fun than this? The California Bears and the Oregon Ducks on a spectacular day here in Berkeley. It is going to be a great one. We'll have it all for you. Coming up next right here on the Oregon Sports Network, the Ducks and the Bears getting after it and they're fired up here in Berkeley we're back with the kickoff will it be eight straight we'll see after this on the Oregon Sports Network welcome back to Berkeley California everyone Joe John Zante and Anthony Newman here on the Oregon Sports Network and it is a spectacular day here, Anthony. It could not be any better than it is. 62 degrees. We expect it to go to about 68. A little bit of wind, but not much coming out of the south. Just perfect. Warm and sunny, high at 66. This kind of weather makes you play fast. I'll tell you that right now. The series history of this one, Cal leads overall way back to 1899 when these two teams started playing. However, Oregon has won seven straight, dating back to 1994. That was the Rose Bowl season. The last Cal win, they came from behind by 30 points in this stadium to upset Oregon 42 to 41 in a thriller. Still the third biggest comeback in all of NCAA football. Mike Bellotti has never lost to California as a head coach at Oregon. And on the other side of the field, you've got Jeff Tedford, who was a part of some of those wins over the Cal Bears, but doing a great job at Cal. Talk about a lot of respect across the country. Tedford's done a great job for this program, and he's taking it to another level. And those uh, corporate headhunters, well, they're a coming because they're a calling for Jeff Tedford. They want him to be their head coach, whether it's NFL or colleges. Yeah, right. His name's going to be out there quite a bit. Time now for the Northwest Dodge Dealers. 
keys to the game, Anthony. Take a look at what you think Oregon needs to do in this one to win. Well, they have to start fast and you got to finish strong. You got to play four quarters of football, Joe, to win this type of game. The second thing is perfect game by Clemens. The quarterback for the Ducks has to play a great game. Don't give it up. Make perfect passes. And the last thing is on the defense, you need to take the ball away. Get that offense of cows off the field. Put your offense back on the field. They got seven takeaways last week against Washington. And Kellen Clemens in his last seven games, Anthony, basically has not thrown an intercepted, yep. a cleanly intercepted ball. He had two interceptions in the last seven games. Both of them, though, were tipped. Well, well Joe, that's playing smart football because what he's doing, he's dropping back. No one's open down the field. Okay, he's taking it, tucking it, and running it. You should consider that, though. Think about that. Seven oh, yeah. games yeah. without a clean pick. That's a, an unbelievable streak for Kellen Clemens, and he'll get a chance because Oregon has won the toss. And California will kick it off. Anthony Binswanger will kick it off. And Ryan Shaw, Kenny Washington are deep for Oregon. Oregon, where they are right now, returning from is the end zone where all the Oregon fans are. I would say about 10,000 Oregon fans for a looks to be a nearly sold out Memorial Stadium. And we are underway here in Berkeley. High kick gets into the jet stream a little bit deep into the end zone. And Oregon will start at the 20. Little wind at his back, so Oregon will go into the wind a little bit here to start. And uh, Oregon likes to take the ball, Anthony. Well, they like to take the ball. A little nerves, Joe, for both teams. I guarantee you, both teams have some serious butterflies because they respect each other. This season, Kellen, you see the numbers over 2,000 yards already. 14 touchdowns, five interceptions. Three of them came in the first game against Indiana. Since then, he has been lights out. And here comes Oregon to start the game. A little quick snap, and they'll run the football. And not a lot of room, a couple of yards for Terrence Whitehead. Take a look at the lineups now for Oregon. Whitehead, Rosario have been a little quiet lately. Maxwell, Tim Day, the tight end with four touchdowns on the year. And Demetrius Williams trying to go today with that toe. On the line, Snyder, Stites, Knievel is the center. Reynoso at guard, Mike Delagrange. And Oka Lucas is available to play guard today with a cast on his hand, he can't snap the ball, but we do expect him to get some playing time. Second down and eight. Clemens has the edge, now he's gonna put it down and run. Picks up about six yards, it'll be third and two and a half or three yards coming up, Anthony. As we look at this Cal defensive lineup, Anthony, Riddle, Alexander, maybe and Smerchek, they run. They don't have a lot of big name stars, but all over the place. They play great as a unit, Joe, and that's the key, playing as a unit. Hunter Slater there, and watch for Gutierrez and Giordano, the two safeties. They get after it. They call them the human missiles. And there's a look at Riddle. They kind of call them a no-name defense, although those safeties have played real well. I know you like that. Yeah, I like that. old safety. Aggressive safeties. Here at Oregon on third down, a little out. Colvin has the first down to the 32-yard line. Well, that's what you want, Joe. You want to get your true freshman, Cameron Colvin, into the game right now. Crucial, getting the first down, a little rollout, getting Clemens to the edge of the offensive line. Nice, easy throw. And, and, hey, Cameron is a big guy. He's not a small receiver now. And these, these, these DBs think they can just knock him down rather than coming. That was Harrison Smith on the tackle. California has not allowed a point in their last two games. They shut out the state of Arizona. Both the Sun Devils and the Wildcats will pitch to the outside. It's blocked pretty well. And then Whitehead maybe cut it up when he had it outside, but still picks up five. Yeah, I think Whitehead's going to look at that film on Sunday and go, why didn't I go outside? That, that, if he went outside, Joe, there was a lot of green grass. Gutierrez there for the stop. Another look at it, Anthony. Kind of a misdirection pitch. Terrence Whitehead is going north and south. That's what he likes to do, Joe, go north and south. But Cameron made a nice block, kept getting this guy inside, and Terrence ran right, almost right into him. Second and five. As the Cal fans trying to make a little noise. Big crowd on hand today. Oregon's going to run it. A little quick hitter. And a first down up to the 45-yard line. And you hear the Oregon fans making some noise. You know, Joe, I really like this Terrence Whitehead. I mean, he, he's he's playing like night and day from his freshman year to his sophomore year. There's not one tackler can bring him down. He just he has great balance and vision. His third carry so far for 15 yards. And this season, closing in on the 1,000-yard mark, trying to become the 10th Oregon running back to do it. That'll be great. 
So first and 10 now at the 45, a good looking drive for Oregon to start the football game. Clemens gonna throw it, out of pressure, throws it back across, kind of a dangerous throw, but incomplete. Oregon trying to set up the screen there, Anthony, and it's a play that just has not worked a lot for Oregon. Well, they're trying to set up the screen, but I think their opponents know that the screen are coming because on that last play, Joe, there was like about six guys standing next to the receiver, the intended receiver. And, and that means that the opponent's doing a good job of seeing what's going on for the tendencies that Oregon is doing on offense. Well, they knew exactly where that one was going. Yeah, two guys yeah. on Rosario there looking for the screen pass. So second down and 10 coming up. Ducks come out with a formation they showed on the first play of the game. And they'll run the football. Whitehead, spin move. Nice. Turns a two-yard loss into a four-yard gain. It'll be third down and six coming up. Joe, that's what I'm talking about. That, that play was all Whitehead. I mean, that should have been a tackle for loss. And, and I'll tell you what, he made it get, get a six-yard gain from nothing. Right here, that should have been a two-yard loss right there. Spin out. Has his vision knowing to go north and south and pick up some extra yards. Third and six coming up for Whitehead. And the Ducks as Whitehead comes out of the game and Oregon spreads the field now. You've got Maxwell here on the near side. Kyle Weatherspoon is in the game and he is in motion. Here comes the rush. Clemens gets sacked. And Oregon's going to have to punt the football. Joe, that was a coverage sack. Cal Bears got some great defensive backs, some great corners. Clemens had nowhere to throw that football. And it really all started on first down with the screen pass. I mean, that's really when you look at the drives and where they broke down. Not that play. It's the first down play. Well, it's the first down play, and, and they struggle with that play. But at the same time, the receivers downfield need to get open. David Dittman back to punt the football. And kind of a wobbler coming down. <laughs> Down towards the 15-yard line. Let's see where they mark it. As it goes out of bounds at the 19, and that's where the California Bears will start. 34 yards on the punt, no return. Well, Joe, everybody in the stadium is waiting to see this explosive offense of cows coming on this football field. I mean, we talked earlier. I mean, they're ranked in the top three in every category for offense. There's unreal. And Aaron Rodgers, first in passing efficiency. 15 touchdowns, four interceptions. Great quick release that the NFL scouts will really like. Big, won't make a lot of mistakes, and uh, is doing everything Jeff Tedford wants him to do. So the Bears start on their own 19. And they'll run it to Arrington, and he's hit immediately. California today, you see Arrington. We'll also see Marshawn Lynch. Chris Mandarino is the fullback. Jeff MacArthur, and then after that, they got a lot of injuries at receiver. And then the offensive line, Marvin Phillip in the center. And Aaron Mertz, the big guy on the right guard. Watch for those two guys. But uh, when you talk about the Cal Bears, Anthony, you, you do talk about all those receivers that have been injured. And, and they do have MacArthur, but you wonder, depth there, they have to go with some freshmen. Well, they're relying on, on Robert Jordan, the freshman, to come out there and make some plays as a receiver. Second down, and they'll call it nine for the Bears as Rodgers goes to throw and does, and Jordan gets the first down. We just talked about him. And he'll pick up 10 on the play, make it, make it 11 on the play after the 34-yard line. For Oregon defensively, Chris Solomona with two touchdowns this year. Robbie Valenzuela, Holote Nada, and Devin Long on the defensive line. Ramon Reed, Matson, and Trucks are the linebackers in the secondary today. Gibson, Finnessy, Nelson, and Jackie Bates. We also could see Finnessy move to safe or to the corner and then see Demetrius Spates yep. at the safety spot. And he had a pick last week. Oregon is not aligned correctly on defense. They've got one guy covering two receivers on the near side. Roger sees it, throws it to a man, and he could go for the touchdown. Finnessy goes after him, and hey, it's just a good job by Finnessy to catch him because they had an uncovered receiver. Well, that happened to him last week. They had an uncovered guy. And last week, the quarterback didn't take advantage of it. This time's a different story. You're talking about Aaron Rodgers seeing something, a mismatch or uncovered receiver, takes advantage of that opportunity. Oregon's lucky they didn't throw a bomb because yeah. it would have it been a touchdown. 
how do you wonder, Anthony, as a fan, how how could that happen? How can you two receivers be down there with only one guy on it? Well, it's in the secondary. It's just a communication errors. You know, who's lined up where and who's got who? Still trying to get it set here as the Bears have moved to the 30-yard line. And uh, they'll run it up the middle. Arrington, five. Touchdown, J.J. Arrington. Boy, that looked easy for the Cal Bears. And they are on top. Joe, talking about a running back hitting the hole so fast, that's what you teach your young running backs. The faster you hit that hole, the defense doesn't have a chance to make a play on you. He hits this hole so fast. Again, there's some holes, but he's into the backfield so fast, Joe, they don't have a chance. And with a guy like that, you, you better change your defensive scheme. So just like that, the Bears are on top. Tom Schneider in for the extra point. And his kick is up, and it is good. California 7, Oregon nothing. Four plays, 81 yards. Took him a minute 37. Now Oregon needs to respond. We're back to a nearly sold-out Memorial Stadium right after this on the Oregon Sports Network. We'd like to welcome all of our viewers along the Oregon Sports Network. That's KEZI, our flagship in Eugene, KDRV in Medford, KDKF in Klamath Falls, Comcast 14 in the Portland area, Yes Network up and down the East Coast, and especially those of you in New York, and the Ozone at GoDucks.com. All members of the Oregon Sports Network, and they have seen California with a quick touchdown, J.J. Arrington, and they're on top seven to nothing, and... I don't know, it's shell-shocked, I guess not the, the word yet, no. but that was a pretty easy, quick drive for the Bears. Well, looking right here, the offensive line did a great job of opening up a seam, and, and that was more of a seam, but J.J. hit that hole so fast, again, the defensive backs or the linebackers don't even have a chance to make a tackle on them. Boy, this program under Jeff Tedford is really on the way up, and of course, J.J. Harrington, as you look at the Carl Jr. scoring drive, four plays, 87 yards, 137 was the focus of a very intense recruiting battle. Yeah. And you can see why, it's a great running Great back. running back, and Joe, and also looking at that play, you know, Tepper called the right play on offense against the wrong play that Nick Galeone, the defensive coordinator for Oregon called. It just, it happened to be a perfect play for that defense. And Oregon again back to receive is Kenny Washington. Boy, it sure looks like the Bears are off sides on that kick, but Oregon will take this one to be Shaw at the 15. And Shaw gets past one guy, gets hit out to the 29-yard line. Hampton on the stop there, but a good return for Ryan Shaw. And Oregon has pretty good field position to start this possession. Well, now Oregon just got hit in the mouth with a blow, but it's still early in the, early in the game. This offensive unit for the Ducks need to come back and, and punch back. You look at a good football team like Cal Berkeley, when they score, Joe, if you want to, if you want to be in this ball game, you also have to score at the same time. Dan Kaus in the game, shifts over. That's Tim Day into the backfield, and Clemens gonna throw on first down. He throws it out to Day, who has some room across the 40, and he puts a big hit on the defender out to the 43-yard line. I tell you, I wouldn't want to hit Tim Day. I mean, <laughs> he is a nightmare. It's 275, he's catching the football. When he turns up field, anytime a tight end catches the football and looks you up, Joe, and you're a defensive back, and you make eye contact, you know there's going to be a problem on your side. Because look at that, delivering the blow to the tight end. You don't want the tight end to look at you, okay? That's how you sneak him. <laughs> Go at his legs, huh? <laughs> yes. Kind of see if remember George Wright used to hurdle those guys. So first of 10 out of the 43, the play action. Clemens going to dump it off today again, breaks one tackle, and he's going to have the first down to the 46-yard line. So Tim Day with a couple of big catches. Again, we talk about the big body, Tim Day. He's hard to bring down with one, one backer. I mean, most backers weigh about 230, 235. Tim Day's 275. Now, Clemens does a great job of avoiding the rush, getting rid of the, fo getting rid of the football, but at the same time, needs to be some protection back there. Nice right. little sidearm pass. Anthony, we've talked so much about defenses. Cal with two straight shutouts. Oregon's first team defense allowing one touchdown in the last three games. Is this going to be a shootout? It could be. <laughs> Ducks on the option. 
Clemson's going to cut this one up. And some running room across the 35 and the first down to the 32-yard line. And he's pumped. But that's what you want, show emotion. You're excited about playing the game. It's the game that you love. You've been playing since you're a child. You're coming out here, and all you're doing is just a simple thing. Run the football, Clemens. He's running the football well, and he gets up and he's pumped up. Boy, he sold that well, too, didn't yeah. he? So 14, 11, and 13, the first three plays on this response drive for Oregon. As Nick Stites comes off the field right now, I'll have to check in on his situation. First and 10 in Cal territory, Duff's going to throw it again. Plenty of time, wide open over there is Rosario. 30, 25, cuts it back, head down to the 20. They'll mark it at the 21. Picking him up with big chunks right now. Well, you got to love it when a big fullback fakes out a defensive back. <laughs> I mean, you call a fullback light on his feet. And yep. this is a nice job by Clemens. He's looking downfield. All the options are closed up. Everybody's covered. Throw it to your drop-off guy. And look at his fake. Cut back inside. Now there's some hits taken on. But Dante's a strong guy. First and 10 now for Oregon at the 21-yard line. Here comes the blitz. They pick it up over the middle. Caught down to the... Well, the mark into the 13-yard line by Dante Rosario, his second catch of the drive. Well, this is important to get Dante into the football game. He's a key factor in this game. Again, I don't think there's a safety or a linebacker who can cover him. Now, you kind of like this second and three, second and two. There's a lot of things you can do here. Go for the end zone. Take a shot. Officially, it is second down and two. Ducks with a double tight end set. Go to Whitehead, up the middle, five, to the one-yard line. Boy, what a response. Oregon right down the field. Joe, that was a great play. That was a misdirection play. The Cal's defense didn't know which way the ball was going. Fake the reverse and then hand off the ball back inside. And Terrence Whitehead just runs right up the middle of the field. Great play right there. Listen to the plays on this drive. 14 yards, 11, 13, 12, 7, and 12 more. And now it's first and goal from the one. The Bears have not allowed a touchdown in two games. Going to throw it to the end zone. Touchdown, Tim Bay. Joe, they just punched back. <laughs> they got hit right in the mouth, and they hit right back. That is the best drive of the year. Yes. What a drive for Andy Ludwig and this Oregon football offense. And you got the linebacker sucking up on run. All the linebackers, Joe, are upfield. And you got one outside linebacker trying to play two guys. Can't do it. And Jared Siegel on for the extra point to try and tie the football game. Place is down, the kick is up, and the kick is good. And how about that? We are tied in Berkeley. Oregon right down the field. Seven plays, 71 yards. Took him just 231, and Kelly Clemens, oh, he's pumped. You better believe the emotion is in this stadium right now. Let's pause for this word from our local station. You're watching Oregon football on the Oregon Sports Network. Welcome back, everyone. It is tied 7 7 with 6.59 here in the first quarter. Back in the drive by Oregon, ending with a Tim Day touchdown, Anthony. And uh, from a confidence standpoint, boy, doing this. Well, right here, the Cal linebackers are running up for the run. Again, there's two, one Cal outside linebacker trying to cover two tight ends. Can't be done. And for Tim, that's his fifth touchdown of the year. Carl's Jr. scoring drive, seven plays, 71 yards, 231, and Tim Day, the one-yard touchdown reception, but they picked it up in big chunks, Anthony. Yeah, I think that did. was what the, the biggest thing is, all over the field, yes. downfield, dropping things out, just very diverse. Spread the field out, making it hard on the defense. There's not one area of the field they can defend. they got to protect the whole field. Jared Siegel will kick it off, and he kind of chunked one like it's an onside kick. It's still loose, but I don't think it went far enough. Let's see if there's a flag down. Joe, it might be offsides also. There's a, there's a flag down. 
I think it did not go far enough before Oregon touched the football. So I know they've been working on that all week. And it's too bad they would have got it if it uh, would have gone far enough because Cal was not expecting it. And we've talked so much, Anthony, about, hey, you have nothing to lose. Go after it. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's There you go. That's how you're playing right there. You have nothing to lose. Illegal block on the kicking team. Illegal block on the kicking team. Well, I thought they threw the flag after the ball was kicked off. I mean, right when it was kicked. I think Coach Blatt is saying, what are you talking about, illegal block? I mean, he's hot. Illegal block by the kicking team. Block occurred prior to the ball going 10 yards. Five yards penalty from the previous spot. We'll replay the kick. It's a, it's different than the NFL, yeah. Anthony. The rule yeah. in the NFL that you can go down and blast you guys. Blast them, yes. And then try and get the ball. In college, you can't run down in front of the ball and blast them. It, uh, before 10 yards. Now, I think it's to the left of the screen. You may see right there, to the far left of the screen. Taking the guy out, but see the ball didn't go 10 yards yet. I think it might have. It's know, close. Think, yeah, I think he would have had it at 10 yards, but again, I think it's that he just blasted that guy. Well, that's what you do. If you're going to hit a guy, hit him like that. Oregon did recover the ball on the onside kick, but to no avail. And the reason, you know, Oregon recovered it, so Cal can't just take the ball right no, there no, because Oregon no, covered no, it. Yeah, so you got to kick it again. Ducks get to kick it again. So. All in all, it doesn't turn out to be a horrible penalty. You get to just no. kick it off again. Took a shot at it. Good shot. Good shot at it. Just didn't get it. But if you come to win this football game, those are the things you have to try to do. And it caught it caught Cal off guard. I mean, it caught everybody off guard. You know, I saw Jared working on that this week during practice, and I thought, hey, they, they're working on something. Either they're working on, <laughs> you know, the end of the game, thinking they're going to be behind and having to catch <laughs> up, or he's got something up his sleeve, and he did. I don't think there's a soul in the stadium thinks you're going to do it again, Andrew. No, no, no. So Siegel will kick this one off, and Terrell Williams and Marshawn Lynch, and they go to the other side, and Cal gets it this time. Boy, that took some guts. Can you believe they did it again? <laughs> Talk about trying to win a football game. You can't, you can't knock them for it, Joe. I mean, you, you really can't. I mean, they're trying to win, the, win this game. Boy. And you know what? We just said, oh, they're not going to do it again. <laughs> Were we wrong? Yard line. We'll take it. I mean, now he goes to the opposite side. Especially from the 30-yard line. You're back another five. They just didn't quite get there. No, they didn't. You got to get a fast defensive back out there to, to try to take that guy out. So Cal starts the possession at the 47-yard line. Rogers going to hand it off. Arrington up the middle for five yards. Well, they need to slow number 30 down right here. He's going to run this football. He's going to carry the ball, Joe, about at least 30 times today. You have to try to contain him. You're not going to stop him. He's going to make some big plays. You have to contain him. So, I mean, this, this hole right here is way too big. And that's where the defensive line, Haloti Nada, came off his block to make a tackle. Second down, they'll call it four, a gain of six on the play. And they'll hand the ball off again in a big hole for Arrington. He gets outside to the 30, 25 and out of bounds. When you take a risk like that, you know you're taking a big risk by getting Cal the short field. Well, looking at this play, it wasn't just Arrington running the football. The defensive backs were making bad angles. Jackie Bates right here comes too far inside. His help is coming from the inside. You come from the outside in to make a tackle. If you're, the, if you're a corner, you know that there's no one outside of you. Four carries, 57 yards for J.J. Arrington already. Ducks are going to really have to see if they can stop the run today. Rogers going to throw. Looks out over the middle, and it's too high. Aaron Gibson on the coverage. 
Well, it's funny that, you know, you want Aaron Rodgers to throw this football. You know, you, you don't want J.J. Aaron to carry, this, carry the ball and run for, you know, 200 yards. You want Aaron Rodgers to throw the ball because at the same time, the receivers still have to also make plays. And I know the Ducks have confidence in their defensive backs. Rodgers has been off a little bit since some of these receivers have been injured. Yeah. Not a whole lot. I mean, when you say off a little bit, you mean going down from 75% yeah. completion to 65. Bears load the right side and they'll motion. Second down at 10. Rodgers, a little pressure. To the outside, is it a fumble or not? Incomplete. Boy, Anthony, I'm not so sure the ball even hit the ground. I don't know. You're right. Another look at it. There's some hitting going on, Joe, but this ball right here, it might have bounced off his pads, off his foot. Right there. Yeah. But not by much. Not by much. But Oregon's defense had that one in the playbook all week, and they knew it was coming. Third and ten. A big third and ten coming up. A lot of confidence placed in the Oregon defense by going ahead with yeah. that onside kick the second time. Let's see if it pays off. Rodgers going to throw, and now the whistle. I don't understand if why they would stop that play, Anthony, if, if it's, it's on defense. the defense. You're right, so it must be on the offense. It must be on the offense, Joe, from the stop, stop play. Fire the snap. Full start. Offense number 87. Five-yard penalty remains third down. Now, these type of games, these players have to be very smart. You have to think. You can't make a lot of mistakes in this football game. Both sides of the ball. And both teams. John Russ, the tight end, was the guilty party. Third and 15. Interesting to see what Oregon will do here defensively, Anthony. Whether they bring the house or play the coverage. I think they're going to send some people after him, Joe. Here comes the pressure. Trucks trying to get there over the top. Touchdown, California on third and 15. Well, Cross is the guy that went to the JC with Aaron Rodgers, so they know each other very well. Correct. That was Stevens who caught that ball. Another look at it, Anthony. That one hurts. That hurts. It's a tight end right down the seam. You got a linebacker underneath. Justin Finnessy thought the ball was coming back behind him. He's looking for the interception because trying to knock the ball out. And the extra point is up and good. Another look at it for the field level. Perfect throw, Joe. That one hurts, too, if you're a Duck fan because... You do the onside kick, you get them stopped, you get them to a third and 15, and then they get, hey, it's a good play. You tip your captain count, but it still hurts if you're an Oregon fan to get him in that position, and then to see the Bears complete the drive. Another look at the Carls Jr. scoring drive, five plays, 47 yards, took him one minute. 26 yard touchdown reception, Anthony. At the same time, those coaches for the Oregon side felt comfortable about their offense, though. Their offense, when they get the ball, they feel, hey, they're in the zone, they can go back and, and score it again themselves. Fans time now for today's trivia question brought to you by Direct TV. After the win against the Huskies on Saturday, how many wins does Oregon head coach Mike Bellotti have as the head coach at Oregon? 64, 72, or 80? Today's trivia question brought to you by Direct TV. Call today for local satellite service and information. We'll have the answer for you coming up in a little bit. I think Coach Vladi still wants an explanation on the first yes. onside kick. Yes, you're right. Still talking about that. Not happy about it either. It's up to that referee to tell him the rules and what's going on and why. Anthony, on that last play as a defensive back, that's all over the linebackers but in front of the secondary. Did the secondary drop a little too far on that? No, it's Justin Finnessy needs to make a play on that. That's just him going for the football. He didn't go for the football. He thought the ball was going to get thrown behind him, so he put his hands up like he was making a pick I instead see. of going for the strip, trying to get the ball out of the tight end's hands because there's no way. Justin Finnessy was there on coverage. Just didn't knock the ball down. 
you know, Jerry Matson was underneath, so Aaron Rodgers had to air this ball up in the air, but right here, right to right your screen, just stops. He stopped. He needs to keep going through the ball, through the defender, make a play. So the ball coming at Justin looked like the blip, yeah. like he's going <laughs> to hit a giant <laughs> water bag and catch it. It's a huge thing coming at him. Exactly. And here's what happens. The tight end went up for the ball in the air. Justin shouldn't. He shouldn't stand there. He needs to go up and make a play. You know, it's like when you're playing uh, baseball, you get into a groove and you get so focused on the ball that the baseball ends up looking like a beach ball. Yeah, and that, that's what it, I think that maybe was yeah. what happened with Justin. It was so big and he thought, hey, I'm going to get a pick and forgot about the receiver. And, and forgot about jumping. You know, again, the football's not going to come to you. You need to go to it. It was a big conversion for the Bears. No question about that. And they have a seven-point lead, and everybody can't tell you how many people I talked to this week who said it was going to be a defensive struggle. And here in the first quarter, it's been nothing more than a shootout. There's a good kick this one off. It's high. It will be returned. Ryan Shaw from the 10. Shaw with a big hole. Shaw has one man to beat. It's the kicker. He gets by the kicker, and he trips and goes down the 35-yard line. 52 yards on the return for Ryan Shaw. Now, Ryan Shaw was caught in a position that I don't think he's seen before. You know, Ryan Shaw is six foot, 230 pounds, and this is a nice, huge hole for him. He sees nothing but daylight. Now, I think that's all. He ran 40 yards, Joe. I think that's his limit <laughs> because he's going 50, he's going 60. He's running out of gas right there. The 40-yard line gets credited with the tackle. Both those legs just giving out. But a great return for Shaw. Now, Oregon, after a kickoff, starts inside the 40-yard line. What an exciting start here in Berkeley. Still 5.52 in the first quarter. That's Garen Strong in motion. Clemens looking down the field, goes deep. Rosario's wide open. Touchdown, Dante Rosario. Are you kidding? And the Oregon fans are going crazy. That gives you chills running down your back. I, I can see it in your face, but I'll tell you one thing. We've been looking for Dante to make big plays. He's been quiet lately, and I've been looking for Dante to run down the sideline because I don't think there's a safety or a linebacker who can run with him. On this last play, Joe, no one was running with him. He was wide open. That one did look like the blimp coming down to him. It did, but he caught it. Just like that, one play, 38 yards, and... Oregon is an extra point away from tying the football game again. Siegel's kick is up and good. It is 14 all with 545 still to go in the first quarter. Well, how fun is this? Yeah, this is a great game. You've seen an offensive performance by both teams. Everything is working right. Right here, Dante just runs. He's running in the tight end position. He runs it out and up. It's a kind of a crossing pattern with the receiver. No one's miscommunication in, in the backfield. Before the game, Anthony, we talked so much about Dante Rosario that he's been a little quiet lately. Three catches already yeah. and a touchdown. Yeah, getting him in the ball game. And you look at Clemens, he's excited. I mean, he's telling his lineman, great job, nice blocking, playing with emotion. How about the Carl Jr. scoring drive? One play, 38 yards and 14 seconds. Dante Rosario, I think more importantly, right now, Kellen Clemens is hot. He's 7 of 8 for 89 yards and a couple of touchdowns in 10 minutes of football. Not even 10, 9 minutes of football. As the Cal defense, they don't want one play touchdown. Those just hurt you. I mean, they really do. You cannot let that happen if you want to be in this ball game. You know, he had four of Oregon's first five touchdowns of the season, Anthony, yeah. and it's been a long time yeah. since he got in the end zone again, but he does here, here in the first quarter. Joe yeah. onside? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think they'd be ready for it. And the kick is off and high. A little number comes down. It's fumbled. Who's got it? It's still loose. Oregon says they have it. Let's see who's got it. Ducks think they have it. And it is not signaled yet. Ducks think they have it. Yeah. 
fans over there are making some noise. They're making some noise in the sideline. From the Dutch sideline, these guys are going crazy. This little short kick as a returner. You got to run up trying to feel that ball. And then you know there's problems right there when that ball comes out. Anthony Trucks, the linebacker, start linebacker, goes out and he receives that football. Terrell Williams couldn't get a hold on it. And you'll see it squirt out right there. And now it's a fight for him. What's that like to be in a pile like that? You just fight for that football. You're trying to get it. You're trying to tuck it right into your belly. And now the Bear fans come up and make some noise. Ducks going to run it. Couple of yards there for Terrence Whitehead to the 23-yard line. Well, that was a nice run by Terrence Whitehead. He just ran over a linebacker right there. I mean, you look at Terrence. He doesn't look like a real huge running back. He's 5'11", two, about 210. God, he's strong, Joe. He can just really run right over you right here. Just a power play right up the middle. And he's going to meet a linebacker right in the hole. And which way does the linebacker go? Backwards. Boy, all week long, everybody was talking about this defensive struggle. And so far, it is a shootout here in Berkeley. Second down and seven. Clemens, quarterback draw. What a run. Oh, he takes a big hit at the 11-yard line, but it looks like, or 16-yard line, apologize for that. It is a first down. Well, Clemens was trying to, I think, fake a defensive back out, Joe. That's not going to happen too often. I mean, he doesn't have much shake in his, in his system. It's a nice call play. It's a quarterback draw. He's looking for the, for, the, for the hole. He gets north and south, but get down, Clemens, get down. Hey, he got a pretty good spot, too, right on the 11-yard line. And it's first and 10 for Oregon. This is all happening away from the Oregon fans. They're in the other end zone. Clemens the throw. Looking over the middle. Touchdown! Tim Day! His second one of the afternoon! Joe, I haven't seen this offensive play like this in a long time by any football team. Not just the Ducks, any football team. USC, Oklahoma. And the fumble turns into an Oregon touchdown. I mean, talk about Tim Day getting open. Again, they're using two guys that are very important. Dante and Tim, the tight end and the fullback. Cal doesn't have an answer for him, Joe. Siegel off for the extra point. The kick is up, and it hits the upright. It is no good. So a rare miss for Jared Siegel. Only his third miss. And a little glimmer there for Cal after the uh, extra point is missed. Maybe a momentum issue, but you see, just right off the upright. And that ball didn't curve. It usually curved to his left. It just stayed in a straight line. That could haunt him in, at the end of the game. How about this number? Kellen Clemens' last three passes have all been touchdowns. Oh. It, with 4.35 to go in the first quarter. Carl Jr. scoring drive, three plays, 27 yards, 105. And the touchdown catch for Tim Day, his second touchdown of the afternoon. Joe, it's going to come down to protecting the football for both teams, and that's how Cal got in trouble by dropping the football. And you can't get rid of the football. And, and when you get rid of the football, you fumble it, and the other team gets it. They come back and score points like this. The Tim Day in the end zone, that's all she wrote. So the Ducks with 13 straight points. Again, it's so early, you wonder whether or not that extra point's going to come and get them. But the other part, if you're Cal, you say, hey, we didn't fumble the kickoff, they wouldn't even have had those six. Right. So is it minus one for Oregon or plus, plus six for them? You see what I mean? Yeah. Plus six for Oregon. Joe, I look at it, it's still so early in the ball game. There's going to be a lot of things happening. There's our get over the ball back at the 10 yard line and hit there. And out of bounds at the 13. Sam Hughes is down there. Now a flag comes out. More flags come out, and it's probably going to be on Oregon. It's on Jared Siegel, Joe. The kicker running down trying to get in the tackle. I think it's on Jared Siegel. Personal foul on Oregon. They're just too excited right now. Well, well especially Jared Siegel, the kicker. I mean, the kicker doesn't need to be down there. Personal foul. Number 25 of the kicking team, late hit. 15-yard penalty from the end of the play. First down. You're right. It was on Jared Siegel. He, he's right there trying to get his blows in. Jared, just kick the football, okay? That's all we need from you. 
That's all we need from that. They cannot be having penalties like that. Is that a little emotion, a little frustration over the extra point? Yeah, he missed or? the extra point. Now he wants to get in there. And, you know, he got some guns on him and kind of a big big kicker. And he wants to get down there and get part of the action. But he's been involved in a lot of the game so far with the two onside kicks and the missed extra point and the fumbled kickoff and now the late hit. Well, I mean, I've never called a kicker's name so much in my life. Well, if he wants to get involved, make sure that the guys are in bounds when he goes to tackle them. So the Bears will start at the 30-yard line instead of the 15. Trailing for the first time in a month. Jordan's in motion. And they'll hand the ball. Arrington looking to get outside with a nice pick. Play made by Aaron Gibson. Well, if Aaron Gibson wasn't there, Joe, JJ would be off to the, to, to the races on that one. That, that's a serious hole that's happening at the line of scrimmage. And the Ducks defense need to find a way to stop that play. They keep running the same play. It's kind of like a, a, a trap. A quick dive play, and, and JJ's running up in the line of scrimmage. Again, Aaron Gibson saved the day on that tackle, coming up making a tackle. That's a heck of a play right there. Second and seven for California. Little turn around, throw to the outside. And uh, here comes the duck pursuit, still on the feet, though, all the way to the 40-yard line. And uh, Jeff MacArthur, who had a huge year last year, is very close to the first down. Well, he's Cal Bears' best receiver on this football team. He's done a lot for this football team. And they will give him the first down. For the nice mark, but Jeff does a nice job in space to run after the catch, making people miss, getting the first down. Boy, I'm not sure how that ball gets marked on the 40-yard line for a first down, but it did. 32 catches this season. As the Bears make a shift into an I formation. And they'll hand it to Arrington. Nowhere to go. Alonte's there. And the rest of the Oregon defense for a loss of five. J.D. Nelson. That's how you stop J.J. Arrington with Halote Knight at number 96 coming in the backfield. How does a guy 350 pounds beat the running back to the spot? Well, because the offensive lineman didn't block him, or he beat the block. As you see right there, and once he's in the backfield, J.J. has no chance of getting any, any kind of gain. Second down and 15. The throw for Rodgers to the outside. The ball through, caught and out of bounds. Gain of about nine on the play, a third and six coming up. When you're looking at this Cal offense, Aaron Rodgers throws some very nice safe passes. Just try to move the ball up down the field just a little bit, then they'll take the shot. Aaron Gibson was playing a good 10 yards off on the receiver. Will Cal Bears take advantage of that? Run the short outs. The Oregon fans now trying to make some noise for their defense here on third and six. His efficiency rating is out of this world. Third down coming up and looking. Now he's flushed. Still looking. Now he throws it. Has a man. What a play. Flag comes down. There is a flag down. And they have the yardage for the first down. We'll have to wait and see what the flag is. They might have had a man downfield, Anthony. Uh, yeah, man downfield or holding. Well, I, think, I think this is coming back. I think it's possible that uh, Marvin Phillip was downfield. Yeah. Let's see if they get it on number 54. Ineligible receiver downfield. Number 54, offense. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay, third down. Good eye, Joe. So they get another shot at it. You know, and that's hard as an offensive lineman because you're looking at your, you look back at your quarterback, he starts to run. So you think he's going to run, so you want to go down the field and block for him, then he stops and throws the football. So you really can't blame that for an, on an offensive lineman. And the Ducks closing in like they yeah. were defensively, and yeah. Rodgers couldn't, he had nothing else to do except just go ahead and throw it. Third and 11 with 2.19 to go in the first quarter. Oregon leads it 20 to 14. Now this third and 11 for the Ducks defense is crucial. It is huge. They get off the football field. Have not forced Cal to punt yet, and they will take a timeout to talk about it here on third and 11. 
And while they talk about it, we will take a break as well. Hey, we need one after three touchdowns for Oregon and two for the Bears here in the first quarter. We're back right after this. Third down, looking down the field, and it is thrown out of bounds. I think the Cal coaches wanted a uh, call on the Oregon players pushing the receiver out of bounds, but not going to get it. Well, they had a one-on-one -on -one matchup with the freshman Jackie Bates against George Jeff MacArthur, and, and they wanted that matchup. Jackie Bates was in great coverage. Tim Day needs to get back on the field. They're working on him, though, Anthony. What's going on, do you think? Well, what happens is, you know, he hurt, he hurt his ankle last week, and the tape from the beginning of the game is starting to loosen up. He wants to get it nice and tight. You want that tape very, very tight. David Loney is the punter for the Bears, and Justin Finnessy is deep for Oregon, standing at his 15-yard line. Loney gets it, and it's a pretty good punt. High, coming towards the sideline, and caught out of bounds. And they'll mark it probably right around the 16 or 17-yard line. That's where they will, 17-yard line. And now Oregon back with the football. Have they cooled off at all? I, I will find out. I think if you're the if you're the Cal defense, you got to be a little shell shocked because you have not allowed anything really all season long, and then boom, Oregon with 20 quick points. Well, in all the plays that Oregon is running on offense, they're working. So Cal doesn't have an answer for anything yet. They haven't stopped anything. Remember, USC scored 24, and one of those was a gift. Make it 23 in that game. 23-17 was the final. Cal lost that game to USC. So with three more points, Oregon would equal the biggest output against the Bears. Here comes the blitz. Kellen to throw it downfield, and I don't think Maxwell ever saw it coming. That was right in the sun. Yeah, that was right in the sun. It's a nice play. If, 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 if Maxwell would have saw that football, he was open. He was breaking away from the, from the corner. Just couldn't see it. Just his second incompletion of the day, 105 yards and three touchdowns in the first quarter for Clemens with 148 to go here. Clemens not sure if he's got the play. Now he calls him in. There's 13 on the play clock right now. Now it's down to 10. Bears again show like they might be bringing it. Quarterback drop, Clemens with a lot of room. Up to the 30, to the 32-yard line. Well, if Clemens is so pumped up, you got to keep giving him the football. I mean, he's going to run it. Another look at it. A designed quarterback sneak, quarterback draw, and you can't bring Clemens down with an arm tackle. And I like the stiff arm. The old stiff arm and try to get away from the defender. Nice play, but right here, you can't, you got to, you got to bring your body, bring your legs to tackle Clemens. You want to take care of that right arm, too, though. Yeah. You don't want that to be dangling out there too much. First and ten for Oregon, now the 33-yard line. And they'll run the football. Whitehead for close to four. Make it Kenny Washington in the ball game now. In the pile. So Kenny Washington giving Terrence Whitehead a little bit of a rest. You know, Joe, looking at this Cal defense, you know, they're trying to call the right play against Oregon's offense, and, and it's not working. I mean, there's seams and gaps just on a simple running play right there. Nice little gap. Washington picks up four yards, three yards. Second down and seven. Ducks out of the eye formation. Clemens throws it, caught by Maxwell at the 45-yard line and a first down. Clemens threw that ball so perfect. Down and away from the defender. I mean, that's a simple curl pattern, Joe. I mean, the, re going to the receiver, Maxwell just ran a, a curl pattern. But it was down and away. The defender didn't have a chance to knock the ball down. There was a lot of confidence around the Oregon, a quiet confidence around the Oregon football team this week just because of that familiarity with the Bears. A little quick count. They come out and try to run it, and nothing doing. No gain, and it'll be second down and 10. Well, I'm surprised that Terrence Whitehead is not back in the game. Terrence Whitehead is, is a threat for them. Kenny Washington also with his speed, but Terrence Whitehead is going to give you something a little bit extra. 
Whitehead's uh, standing up on the sideline, so it's not a situation where he's being worked on or retaping or anything. He's standing up. And uh, Oregon has done this all year, though. You know, they're going to keep some fresh legs. Yeah. you got a whole game to think about. It's still not the end of the first quarter yet. Second down and 10 with 10 seconds to go. Here comes the blitz. Clemens hit. But a great catch by Washington and a pretty good move just to get back to the line of scrimmage and out of bounds. And that is the final play of the first quarter. Anthony, what a quarter. That is one of the most exciting quarters you are ever going to see. That was two heavyweights, Joe, going toe-to-toe, blow-to-blow. The winner of this one is going to be in second place in the Pac-10 and still have a chance for the Pac-10 championship. Ducks are off to a great start. We're back with the second quarter right after this. Welcome back to Berkeley, everyone. A full house and a great atmosphere for college football. A great scene, Anthony, for Excellent. college football as well. And they've seen a great quarter. There you see the overhead view. That dark section right there in the middle is the Cal student section. And there on the right side by that blue banner this is where all the Oregon fans are sitting. Our aerial shots today by the Saturn airship. I mean, what would you want to be doing today? Come in here watching a great football game in a nice venue, nice stadium. I mean, this is this is the best right here, Joe. Their fans getting into it now here on third and nine coming up for Oregon. And so far, Kellen Clemens really gotten it done for Oregon. Well, Joe, he's doing everything. I mean, he, he's, he's dropping back, finding the open receiver. Tim Day plenty of times. He's running with the football. And when he runs with the football, Joe, he's protecting the football. Running hard, not one guy can bring him down. Ducks with an unusual formation here on third and nine. Three receivers to the top, but also kind of tight. Now they'll motion. That's Maxwell in motion. No pressure. Clemens is hit, but he makes the throw out to Colvin. He's not able to get it. And then Colvin takes some punishment. Would have been a great catch to get it. It was a little bit high after the pressure came. Well, I think that's Cal. They're going to do all day is try to keep putting pressure on Clemens. Cameron does a nice job coming inside and then going back outside. Kind of a whip, whip route. You come inside and you whip back outside. Tough throw, tough catch. Key was the pressure that the Bears were able to put on that time. Yeah. For the most part, Oregon's done a great job in protecting Kellen Clemens so far. Dittman the punt, he drops it and then gets it away. And it's one of his better punts. Fair catch called for at the 10. Maybe that's what, maybe that's what you do. Big punt for Dittman. 44 yards, no return, and the Bears start all the way back at their 10-yard line. Well, the Bears offense stalled a little bit last series. It'll be interesting to see what they do this series, how they're going to move the football. Are they going to run the ball, or are they going to throw it, air it out? Fans, let's look at the DirecTV trivia question now. And uh, after the win against Washington on Saturday, how many Oregon wins does Coach Bilotti have at Oregon? Well, the answer, 80 wins. Call DirecTV today for local satellite service and information. There's a start at the 10 now. And they'll run it to Arrington, who's hit behind the line and gets back to the line of scrimmage. But Justin Finnessy right there to say hello. That's right. You bring a safety up in the box, meaning up next to the linebacker. So you got an unblocked player right there. The lineman, offensive lineman, don't account for him in the box because he's a safety. He's going to make that tackle all day long. You have to make that tackle all day long. Got a couple for loss, and officially, I don't think they'll count that one as a loss because Arrington got back to the line of scrimmage, and we're at second and ten now. So finally, the teams have traded a couple of punts. Rogers on the rollout. Room to run if he wants. Now he throws it. Throws it high, but a good catch made on the far side, and it's going to be just a little short of the first down. MacArthur makes the catch his third of the day, and it'll be just short of the first down. Well, I like what they're doing with Rodgers, rolling out to the side, get away from those defensive linemen of Oregon, get them on the edge and throw the football. There you see Rodgers. He's a quarterback, Joe, that has it all. He really does. I mean, it's mechanics. Anthony, they just marked that as a first down, and then that's unbelievable what just happened on that play. The ball was clearly short. 
of the 20-yard line. They started with the ball on the white stripe of the 10-yard line. When they moved it out of the inside, they moved the ball up to the line and gave them the first down. Well, they're still at the 20-yard line. What the Ducks need to do is not let them get those kind of plays. Keep them from getting first downs. I mean, you can't just it, assume it's a first down. Yeah, though. yeah that's true. I mean, the, the referee clearly marked the ball between the 19 and the 20-yard line, and they thought we don't want to measure it. Running this side, Arrington with a lot of blockers, looking to get outside and does, close to the 30. Mark it at the 29-yard line. Might as well mark it at the 30. Yeah, 32, yeah, 33. But, you know, looking at Arrington, eight rushes for 64 yards. You can't let him get to the outside. You have to be smart, push him back inside. Somebody needs to contain him. Don't let him get to the outside. Your help is on the inside, not the outside. Bates comes out of the game, and Demetrius Spates comes in. Bears go with the two tight end set. Rodgers knocked away. Might have caught his own ball. The referee signaled. <laughs> the referee signaled incomplete pass. And then Rodgers picked it up and went for it. And he gets a completion to himself for the first down. Well, I thought the ball hit the ground, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> that ball hit the ground. Important for the Duck defense to hang in there with a couple of bad yeah. breaks here, Anthony. So first and 10 from the 39-yard line, Aaron Rodgers with a completion and a reception. Here comes the blitz, throws it to the outside, he got tipped as well. Ducks getting their hands up. Well, that's what they have to do. The defensive lineman, Aaron's going to throw a lot of short throws. Put your hands up in the air and you got to block them. Another look at that reception for Aaron Rodgers. Well, this ball clearly hit the ground, Joe, right? Oh, hit his foot. He calls his he foot. He takes it off his foot. So I'm that's a catch. We're wrong. Nice save. The referee behind the play clearly signaling incomplete, but then I think he thought, well, maybe it wasn't, and then well, he kind of... So now I've changed my mind. I think it was a catch. The referee has some great eyes to look at that and see that. Meet his carrots. Second down and ten. Let's show the blitz. Here they all come. They're after him and they don't get him. Looking downfield. Wide open down there. The perfect over his head. Aaron Rodgers threw that ball. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 yards in the air. Well, that's a long foul ball, Joe. That's what we call them, long foul balls. Now both sides are going, whew. Cal wanted that touchdown, and, and Oregon saying thank you. But right here, he's throwing this ball. I mean, even he's on his back foot throwing this ball 70 yards, 60 yards down the field. Somehow, Aaron Rodgers, or Aaron Gibson stopped, didn't run with the receiver. Jeff got behind the secondary. He Can't stopped look. running, too. Yeah. Third and 10 now. Well, this game's had everything. And it's only <laughs> two minutes into the second quarter. Here comes Haloni on the screen pass. It's there, but Oregon's defense is there as well. But he gets away. Marshall Lynch almost to the first down marker. How did he get away? A great athlete. That's how he got away. Wow. Fourth and two. Well, they got to kick it here. They got to get rid of it. But Mar Marshawn Lynch. He's the next super superstar for the running backs in the Pac-10. He's ducky. He's like, right here doing the old Barry Sanders. You get below the defender. He, Joe, he's dangerous. I'm telling you right now, he is dangerous. He's going to be a good running back. His knee might hit the ground, though, Joe. Boy, what a play by Marshawn Lynch in fourth and two, so kind of a dangerous area if you're thinking about a fake. Oregon in their straight defense. And the Bears will punt it. Kind of a wobbler. And Finnessy takes a fair catch at the 15-yard line. So how about that? Three straight punts. The offense slowed down. They cooled off. Somebody poured some water on them. <laughs> Ducks will start over for the first time, heading the other way towards the Oregon fans, leading it 20 to 14 over the Cal Bears. Welcome back, everyone. Oregon leading this one 20 to 14 with 12.02 to go in the second quarter. And that's Tim Day on the bench getting worked on, Anthony. What's going on there? Trying to get rid of those cramps. It looked like he may have some cramps, or it could be some scar tissue, Joe. 
that when you hurt his leg, the scar tissue that's not loosening up, and that makes it hard to run when you have that scar tissue in there. I see they're applying pressure. A lot of times when you're applying pressure, you're trying to get rid of that scar tissue. Look at Oregon's possession so far today. Punted the first one, punted the last one, but between there, there were three touchdowns, a couple of them real quick. And this time, they'll start from the 15-yard line. And they'll run the ball, Whitehead, trying to get outside, and he'll be run out of bounds after a three-yard gain. Out to the 17-yard line. It's a nice play by Harrison Smith, the corner. Usually, a lot of corners don't make tackles or don't want to make tackles on running backs. Right there, he just drove him to the sideline. Terrence Whitehead runs up the middle. There's nothing there, so he keeps bouncing to the outside as a corner. You want your corner just to get on the tackle. Don't make a, 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 a devastating tackle. Just get him out of bounds. And that's what Harrison Smith did. Second down and seven. Here come the Bears on the pressure. No screen pass. It's almost intercepted, and a flag is down. Boy, that play. Basically the same sort of deal as the shuttle pass, right? Yeah, it, yeah it's the same, but it's, it's still a screen. And it, the opponents know when Oregon's running screens. They really do. Penalties on Oregon. Holding. Offense number 68. Half the distance from the previous spot. Replay. Second down. Jack Wood is today's referee. And it takes it back to the nine-yard line. Well, now you, you don't want to get into this field position game here because the Oregon's getting backed up. If the punter didn't have to punch him out of the end zone, you're talking about Cal using half the field to try to score. Second down. And 16 for the Ducks. And they'll run the football. Whitehead. Has some room at the first down across the 25-yard line. Talking about taking a balloon and taking a needle and popping it right there for Cal's defense. When you, you have that team backed up near their end zone and you let them get out on a running play, Joe, a simple dive pattern, there's, there's no lead blocker. It, it kills you as a defensive unit. Ducks are still working on Tim Day, so he's not in the football game right now. Dan Kaus trying to pick up the slack, and Nate Leobrotten in there as well. Nate Leobrotten is in right now on the near side tight end spot. Here comes the blitz for Clemens. Throws it, and it was just in and out of the hands of Terrence Whitehead. Thinking about running. That was the same play they ran against Stanford for a big gainer. Y yes, it was. Exact same play. Terrence just has to, has to catch the football, and he knows that. You're not going to see that. It's kind of a wheel route. He comes back inside on the linebacker and on the safeties. That should have been a catch right through his hands. He's got to look that ball in. Your eyes get real big, Joe, right before the ball hits your hands. Second down and 10. Here they come again. Ducks will run it, trying to break it outside. And Whitehead tries to cut it up with nothing there. It'll be third and 10 again. Well, it looked like this Cal defense has settled down a little bit. A lot of the plays that they're calling are working. Or the Oregon's offense has slowed down just a bit. I think they're bringing a little more pressure. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. They're, they're sending the house. Sending the linebackers. Clemens, two of his last five, throwing the ball, so he's cooled off. Part of that's due to the Cal pressure. Now the crowd's making a lot of noise. Out of the shotgun. Here they come. Clemens hit. Goes down. Second sack of the day. Nobody open. Well, you almost felt like the sack was coming. Well, that's right. There's nobody open downfield. You got to credit the Cal secondary staying with the receivers. The receivers have to get open downfield when your quarterback's in trouble and they're sitting in the house. You got to find some space. Dittman for his third punt today, averaging 39. And he'll stand from his own five-yard line and send it out. It's not going to turn over. Mixon's going to take it right at the 42-yard uh, line. He gets away. 
and then cuts it out, still on his feet, a nice return across the 50 into Oregon territory. So the Bears have the short field again. Oh, short field, the defense backed up against the wall, but Mixon right here is making some plays, trying to make something out of nothing, almost shouldn't have caught that ball, should have been a fair catch. Taking something, positive yards. So they will have it at the 47 yard line when we return. Welcome back, everyone. There's a beautiful look at Memorial Stadium from the Saturn airship. And you can see it is full. I mean, it is flat out full. Matter of fact, it's so full, other people have got to find seats on Tightwad Hill outside the stadium there for free. Why not? No seats in the house, so. Just don't roll down that hill now. No, you don't want to do that. Bears start at the 47. After the good punt return, it was a 38-yard punt and 10 on the return. Ducks trying to get there. Now Rogers is going to run it, and he'll pick up about six yards. Tell you what, Devin Long having a hard time getting to the quarterback, just getting on the inside, not being able to get free from that offensive lineman. Well, Oregon is trying to use a four-man rush a, a number of times, trying to put pressure on, on Aaron Rodgers. The problem, though, is a lot of the passes are real quick, and then when Rodgers has the ball and he's holding it, off the line is doing a great job of holding them back. I mean, defensive line for Oregon just can't close that pocket. Devin just not able to get free yet. Second and four for the Bears. Rogers a little quick drop. Not there. Almost intercepted by Robbie Valenzuela. You can't blame him not used to having the ball that close to him. Well, yeah, that's a defensive lineman. They do drills on on Thursdays catching the football, but I don't think it's, it worked for them. That's just going to leave a red mark. Oh, that's yeah, all that's going to that do. That is. Now, Aaron Rodgers wanted to throw the ball to the right, to the receiver, but Jackie Bates, Joe, was all in coverage. I mean, he had a jam at the line of scrimmage and didn't let him get off the line. Big third and five coming up. Rodgers, one of his last four. Ducks again don't have the... And covered, now they do on the top of your screen, and now Rogers going to throw. Ducks trying to get home, and it's thrown high, and incomplete. And Cal will have to line up. You would think to punt the football, but it's also an area you could go for it. You could fake it, fake the punt. A lot of things you could do here. Well, here you want to punt the football. It's a game of field position. The defensive backs, Justin Fennessy and Aaron Gibson, are all over their man. I mean, that talk about coverage. That's like basketball. You're just shading the guy. J.D. Nelson just a few feet away from that one. So David Loney will punt the football. Or so it would seem. Justin Finnessy back around his 10-yard line. With 8.58 to go. Here in the second quarter. Loney will go ahead and punt it. End over ender. Returnable. Taken right up the middle. And Finnessy... Still on his feet to the 26-yard line, so it worked out very well for Oregon. 31 yards on the punt only, and not a very, 16 on the net, 14 on the return there. So uh, let's pause now for this word from our local stations. You're watching Duck Football on the Oregon Sports Network, and now we're getting the word that we're going to just hang out because we want to. Yeah, why would you want to leave? <laughs> I want to stay. Watching a good football game. Hey fans, tomorrow is the last home game of the season for the women's soccer team. It's senior day, so come out and support the Ducks as they take on Arizona. 1 p.m. Pape Field on Sunday, November 7th, last home game of the year. First and 10 at the 27, little option. Clemens keeps it and falls forward towards the 30. Back to that punt, Anthony, as I was uh, rushing to get us to the break and then... Uh, the powers that be decided to stay here. The, there's a guy they call a red hat. He stands down there on the field, but he's really got a red on his arm. He's yeah. called the red arm, not the red hat. Anyway, uh, net punting is so important, and, and Cal really looking for a better performance at Ohlone in that situation when you have a chance to get the field position, and he just lost it all yes. with not a good punt. It's so important. It's so important to play field position because it's hard enough for the defense, the offense, to go 70 yards, but when they're only going 50, whew, watch out for the defense. That's going to run it. Whitehead. A couple more. Things have definitely settled down. Five touchdowns in the first 11 minutes of this game and none since. 
And Oregon has a man down on the field. I think it's Robin Knievel. Robin's been really struggling with that injury he's had all year, Joe. I think it's that ankle. You call it a high ankle sprain. What's, yeah. what's that mean, Anthony? Well, it's just real high up. It's almost towards your shin, but right below your shin. And it's just all your weight is on there. And Robin Knievel, he's not a small guy, you know, and he's trying to plant on that ankle and, and hold other big guys off. Uh, it's just it's tough. If it's not healed and you're playing with pain, it's, it's a tough deal. And I guarantee you, Joe, there's a lot of tape on that ankle. There's braces, tape, so it's real stiff and tight. He can't hardly move it. Painful injury, and it's more painful at night. My, my worst injury was a high ankle sprain. Going home after the game, laying on the couch, worst pain of my life. Mm. Worst pain of my life. You know, it brings up the issue that Oregon did not have a bye this yeah, year. Not right. able to really get those bumps yeah. and bruises healed. And Demetrius Williams has not played yet today. He's on the sideline. Doesn't look like he's going to. So there's definitely been an issue with not being able to get healthy. Yeah. But hey, that's football. You got to play football. through it. Yes, you do. Hey, fans, don't forget to pick an official Duck Spirit button. This week's slogan was Welcome to Oregon. Leash law strictly enforced. That was uh, against the Huskies. Pick up your... Spirit buttons at any local participating Bymont and Oregon Community Credit Union the week prior to every home game. Third and about four coming up. Anthony, Oregon's offense a little less explosive, obviously. Yeah. You see anything different that's happening on the Oregon offense? Want to no. run the ball a little bit more? Uh, well, I see Cal just playing different. I think Cal's blitzing a whole lot more, mm -hmm. giving Clemens a hard time, Joe. They show like they're going to bring it again. Here they come. Gets picked up, little dump out to Whitehead, has the first down, cuts it back, and more out to the 44-yard line. Big conversion there. Well, that's how you beat the blitz. When they're sent in the house, you send a, a running back or a tight end out to the flat real quick. It's a pop pass, a quick pass, and you beat the blitz. You see Terrence Whitehead to the left of your screen. He's coming out right now. Clemens knows, I got to throw the football to you right now. Terrence does a nice job of getting the first down. And you know, Anoka Lucas, who's normally the center, is at right guard now. Made a great block on that play. The guy's really coming. Washington, nothing. He'll lose a couple. More than a couple. He'll lose three back to the 42-yard line. Well, that was the defensive line of Cal just getting in the backfield. And, you know, it's hard for Washington when he comes into the football game and there's nothing there and he wants to run the ball well, but there's nothing there for him. Cal's defense really picked it up. Yeah. Second and 13 coming up. Ducks now trying to spread the field a little bit, see what they can do with that. Four receivers. And movement on the Oregon offensive line. We'll move it back five more. I think it's on Lucas. Good ball. Full start. Offense number 55. Five-yard penalty remains second down. Ducks with four penalties here in the first half. One of them was on that onside kick try. And then they came right back to try it again. I still can't get over that. How gutsy that was. You're trying to win a big game. That's when you have a bag of tricks, Joe, and you pull them all out and you try, you try all of them. But it's fun for the team. It also shows a lot of confidence yeah. in your team. You got nothing to lose today. And Oregon leading this one by six over the number four ranked team in the BCS standings. Clemens, outside wide open is Whitehead. Cuts back, that was it from behind. He gets close to the first down. Let's see where they mark it. They mark it right on the 45 yard line, which looks like it should be a first down. And they do give him the first down. The first down, that, again, they pop, Oregon's pop another bubble for Cal's defense. A, a blitz, here comes the blitz, and there goes Terrence Whitehead. Joe, out of the backfield, does a nice job of cutting back inside, cuts back on two defenders to get the first down. And I want to be fair here, I can't believe they didn't measure that. The ball, the marker on the other side was right at the line, but they'll go ahead and move the chains, and Orange will pick up the first down. Looking downfield, and this one's throwing a little bit too far for Weatherspoon. Going vertical, though. Yeah, take a shot. Why not? And Weatherspoon, his fresh legs put him in the ball game. Young guy who can catch the football, has a lot of speed. 
test those safeties. The safeties haven't been tested deep yet. Kellen is 12 of 17 for 145 yards. And the three touchdowns. And now he's got a second and 10 in Cal territory. Boy, it'd be big if Oregon could get a, a score. Even a field goal would be huge. They'll run it. Little hole, Whitehead still moving. Whitehead breaks a tackle across the 30. That is a great run. Joe, man. I can't say enough about this young man, number 24, Terrence Whitehead. Watch his legs. I want you all young running backs to look at his legs. His legs never stop moving. Very low to the ground, protecting the football. But look at his legs, the high knee lift. That's how you run the football right there. I mean, 11 rushes for 77 yards in the first half, Joe. Okay, he's paying the bills right there. Ducks with a good drive going down to the 27-yard line now. Going to run the option. Kellen, this time goes back and a flag comes out as well. So that one didn't work out at all. And usually when they throw that flag, it's a holding on the offensive line. And so they'll march it back. Which is a little costly, Anthony, because you're just on the cusp of field goal range there. Now you got to do some work again to get into field goal range. You're right, but the good thing, it's only first down. Illegal use of the hand. Offense, number 59. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay, first down. They get Ian Reynoso on it. The, uh, it's in there, the right guard. Can't tough, really see it. Tough to see there. What he did, he's put, he's put his hands to the face, and I saw a, a cow helmet rolling around on the ground, and that's what they called, probably. Don't want to lose your helmet in a battle like this one. And now it's back to the 38-yard line, first and 20. Makes it a little tougher. Oregon occupying the ball here. Eight plays on this drive. Tim Day back in the game. That's a good sign. Clemens gets the corner. Now he might run it. Dove puts a move on and gets about four yards yeah. to the 33-yard line. That's what I like about Clemens so much. Now, look, he's over coaching the young guy, telling him, hey, you know, here's where you got to go. But being very positive towards that coaching, coaching from the field. You don't point your finger and yell and scream at a guy. You tell him, hey, you pat him on the helmet. This is what you're supposed to run. Now, Clemens, there's nothing there. He wants to throw this... This pattern, this out pattern, decides I got to tuck it and run. Smart quarterback. This drive started back at the 27-yard line for Oregon. And they just worked their way down the field. Try to overcome a couple of penalties. Here comes the Cal defense. Clemens on the quarterback draw. Breaks one. Stick arms to the 20, 15. And goes down awkwardly at the 10. Is he okay? He singles first down. That's a tough young man right there. Uh, I was, people I know were a little nervous when he went down, but he has that stiff arm down, Joe. <laughs> I haven't seen a quarterback do a stiff arm like that. This quarterback draw is working, so they keep using it right here. Faking the defensive back. You're faking a safety out from a quarterback standpoint. That, a safety, you can't get faked out by a quarterback. I mean, you don't look at on film on Sunday and, and get talked about. And the Cal defense calls timeout. Don't blame them. And the Oregon fans come to their feet. What a performance so far by Oregon. As you see the throng of Duck fans here. Ducks are not in the end zone yet, though. As we take a timeout down to the 10-yard line. Can they get another one here before the half comes to the end? 20 to 14 is our score right now. Hey fans, welcome back. Oregon leading this one 20 to 14. Allstate Insurance and Southwest Airlines want to congratulate all the winners of the Duck Road Trip tickets. Here they are, Ron Woods, Julie Leish, Angela Silverman, Verla, and Dennis, all here at the game today having fun. And our apologies to Mike Neuschwanger, who is also a winner, but he was not able to make the trip down to Berkeley. Congratulations to all the winners from Allstate, the Allstate agents in the area, and Southwest Airlines. 
but Mike's watching a good game, though. Mike, we're missing you. <laughs> yeah, he's wa you're watching a good game, Mike. There you see, those are all Oregon fans over there in the corner, just filling up that end zone. And they're making some noise, Anthony. They're yes. really excited on their feet over there. They're doing the, the go duck chant back and forth, and it sounded like we were at Austin Stadium. Certainly the magnitude of the game is on everyone's mind. Oregon controlling the ball, 17-09. Cal is first in the Pac-10 in time of possession. Oregon second, and today they're getting it done. Yeah. And this is going to be the 10th play of the drive, which is five minutes old right now. Joe, the, the Oregon offense is keeping the Cal offense off the field. That's so important. Boy, all fans making noise. Kellen trying to get the Duck fans in that corner to be quiet a little bit. Tim Day motions. He'll throw it out today. One-handed catch. And he'll pick it up. And is slow to get up down to the seven yard line. Tim Day is not 100%. And if he's 100%, I think he's going to break that tackle. That leg is bothering him a little bit, but he's still a tough guy. I mean, and, and Tim Day has to know if he wants to play in the next level, you have to play with injury. You have to, nice catch. Great though. catch. <laughs> Great catch. Great catch. His fifth of the day for 45 yards. Boy, everybody just. On their feet. Very tense stadium. Clemens on the draw. Five, three, two, touchdown, and a flag is down. There is a flag down. That's holding, Joe. Flag down on the play. Holding on Oregon. It's coming back. That hurts. That hurts. Wow. Third penalty. Holding. Offense number 74. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay, second down. The third penalty this drive is a killer. That's on Nick Stites. The left guard, he's right in the middle of the screen, right, right by Clemens. And that's kind of a tough call right there. The defense guy was just spinning around. I don't know if I would have called that one. Boy, that's tough. That is a tough one. So now they move it all the way back to the 17-yard line. Clemens going to throw it. Here comes the pressure over the middle. One hit is hit hard. Ooh, down to the 8-yard line. That's a safety hitting the running back. Safeties dream about those plays right there. I'm surprised. Well, I'm not surprised. Terrence Whitehead did the right thing. He held on to that football. hear that that's a hit third Oregon can still get a first down right at the goal line so third and seven officially basically third and goal Maxwell's in motion look at Enzo Maxwell going to get it touchdown Marcus Maxwell what a throw by Kellen Clemens what a throw Joe that's the best throw I've ever seen a college quarterback he laid that right on the money even before Maxwell came out of his break as a receiver. Right into the corner of the Oregon fans, and they just erupted with the catch. Joe, he threw that football just so perfect. Maxwell is running away from the defender. Clemens throws the ball before Maxwell comes out of his break. He knows he has to go catch the football. Perfect pass. And they overcame three penalties, yeah. Anthony, on the drive. Siegel on to try the point after. He missed the last time. This one is up and good. And Oregon has a 13-point lead over the number four team in the country. What a first half for the Oregon Ducks, Anthony. Joe, I always say there's a lot of time left in this game. Another half to go. Another look at it here, Anthony, from the field level. Um, and look at this. This pass, the, the, the corners don't even have a chance. Harrison Smith doesn't have a chance to cover that. Now right here, he's running away. He runs up to, pushes the, the corner, pushes away. Clemens throws the ball out and away. Can't do nothing against it. Now we talked about balls coming down looking like blimps. That one came down like a baby. <laughs> the baby's in the air. Just got to put my hands out. Very delicate. a little baby. Very delicate. And look at Clemens. He knows it too. Right when he threw that football, he knew it. It's like a, a baseball player hitting a home run. Right when he hit it, they know. 
It's out of the ballpark. Carl's Jr. scoring drive, 12 plays, 73 yards, 6 minutes and 30 seconds, and overcoming three penalties on there to get the touchdown. That's a gigantic drive for Oregon. That's the Oregon offense staying focused, Joe. Very focused. Maxwell, the touchdown. And fans get ready because basketball is here. First game exhibition coming up on Sunday, but want to get you up to Portland. The Pat May Jam is here again. Come watch the uh, Oregon men's team take on Vanderbilt. They were in the Sweet 16 last year. The women take on George Washington. Doubleheader event December 4th at the Rose Garden in Portland. Tickets are as low as $10. Think about that. Ten bucks gets you in for both games, all Ticketmaster locations, or Ticketmaster.com and the Rose Garden box office. One ticket for two great games. Always a fun thing, a kind of a tradition for me to be there at the Rose Garden. I know you're going to bring a big group too, yeah, huh? Yeah, I, I coach my daughter's fifth grade basketball team, and I'm taking them there to, to show some basketball, some duck basketball, girls, women's and, and men's. And you'll be able to see that one on the Oregon Sports Network on Comcast 14 statewide. So those of you in the Eugene Springfield area, that one will be on Comcast 14 on December 4th. So mark your calendar, but more importantly, we'd love to get you to the Rose Garden. And uh, you know what I think people do is they go up. It's, you don't have to fight those post-Thanksgiving yeah, crowds. Yeah, exactly. You go to the game and do some shopping, go out to dinner right. in Portland. Hey, Joe, I thought you were going to ask me. You coach your basketball. What do you know about basketball? I thought, I thought you were going to get at me. But you, <laughs> I get at I left you. I'll save for, it up. I left it out there for you, Joe, but you didn't get me, so. Basketball? <laughs> hey, I know you played some baseball yeah, in your played day. Baseball, yeah. You played football. What, what's up with you coaching basketball? I, I have my best friend, Anthony Taylor, one of the best, oh, yeah. best basketball players to play in Oregon. He's, he's the assistant. Newly inducted into the Oregon Sports Hall of Fame. Yes, yes. You're next, my friend. Uh, nah, nah. We'll work on that one. Anthony Taylor, though, one of those Oregon oh, greats. And Unreal. Playing in those days and getting up and down the court. And this yeah. basketball team this year is going to be uh, real fun to watch. Jared Siegel kicks it off. Very high. Now drifting back to the five-yard line. Trying to get to the other side. And there he goes across the 20 and out to the 25-yard line. And a whole bunch of ducks over there. I know the special teams coaches always say to the outside guy, do not lose contain. <laughs> That's right. You stay on the outside. I don't care what kind of fakes or jukes he does. You stay to the outside. Anytime Marshawn Lynch has the ball in oh, his hands, dangerous. you can feel the danger with him. Dangerous. True freshman. Bears have gone cold a little bit. They had touchdowns on their first two possessions, and that's been it. Well, I think here we're going to see the two-minute offense. Well, I know we're going to see the two-minute offense. And they're very good at the two-minute offense, the Cal Bears. Cal looking for some momentum before halftime. With 2.08 to go. Looking downfield, and it is caught at the 45, and a flag comes out. I think it's going to be a face mask. So they're probably going to get 15 or 5 more onto it. We'll see what they call. But, boy, right out of the Oregon touchdown, here come the Bears. Well, Aaron Rodgers threw this one right on the money. Talk about two great quarterbacks playing today. Aaron Rodgers hits it right, just right in the belly. Gibson was right in coverage, but just couldn't get it out. Not a face mask. I think they were going to call. Defense, number 28. Penalty is declined. First down. So they were going to call interference on that. I thought maybe when he grabbed his shirt, that, that might have been the face mask. Well, but yeah, yeah they, well, they called it on the wrong guy, not 28, J.D. Nelson. That was on Aaron Gibson. Works out better. MacArthur, his fourth catch for 56 yards. He's really, right now, J.J. Arrington and MacArthur. Are the two guys. Are the two guys, although J.J.'s been pretty quiet since the opening drive. Rogers going to throw it again. Pressure coming. And it'll be second and ten. Well, it's important for the Oregon's defensive front four to get some pressure on Aaron Rodgers. He can't sit back in the pocket. This young man sits in the pocket. Joe, he's going to tear you up. Just a little too far for Sam Desaw. Again, they're thin at receiver. Yeah. They've lost some, some players to injury. So maybe the timing off just a little bit. Second and ten now for Cal with 1.48 to go here in the half. They'll run this one. Arrington runs into Haloni Nada. He'll pick up five to the 40-yard line. And it looks like the Bears are going to want to go on the ball here with 137. 
Well, this was scary from a defensive standpoint. You don't want to give up the big play, but yet you don't want to march down the field and get in field goal range. You want to keep, keep them out of the zone. Bears have one timeout left. Let's look at the blitz. Uh-oh, MacArthur's got it at the 25 and down to the 20-yard line. Ball comes out, though. Do they say he's down? He is down. He's down at the 21-yard line with 115. Aaron Rodgers is just putting the ball right on the money. The offensive line is doing a great job protecting him. And then MacArthur just turning around, catching the football right in his stomach. Boy, I'm not so sure he was down, Anthony. Yeah, that might be a fumble. He's injured, I think. Remember, you're not down until you're on the ground. ground. Yeah. And the fans, the Oregon fans, now see it on the replay. Not going to matter. The call has been made, and it's first and ten for the Bears at the 21-yard line. Rodgers looking at the end zone. This one's too far. Trying to use the tight ends in this game which is huge for Tedford. You use the tight ends down here in the red zone from the 20 to the goal line. But I don't think the tight ends can run away from the Oregon's safeties. See Robin Knievel getting worked on with that high ankle sprain. Get taped up again. I think he may be done. He's taking off his hand pads. Second down to 10, 57 seconds. Bears with one timeout left. Rodgers going to throw. Defense trying to get home. All the way to the end zone. Touchdown, MacArthur. And that's broken coverage right there. I mean, you're playing. He thinks he's playing cover two, meaning that you jam the guy and you sink. But there's no one over top of him. When you get down to the red zone as a corner and that coverage, you have to sink with the guy. Bears on for the extra point, and the kick is up, and just sneaks inside the post, which is an important point right there as the Bears cut the lead to six. After Oregon went up by 13, Cal just marched right down the field, right down the field. Well, and a lot of that was the Ducks secondary just not playing smart football, and they know that. They'll go on and make adjustments. Milani's not too happy right now. He's saying, you gotta, you gotta sink with them. You gotta think out there. Don't let them go. Another look at it, Anthony. And it looks like, again, the Ducks are playing cover two with two safeties playing deep half, and the corners are playing kind of in the flat, but down here in the red zone, you gotta sink as a corner. You gotta sink with that guy. You can't let him go. And I, you know, I'm not so sure that it's all Aaron Gibson on that situation because MacArthur, uh, certainly got open, but Rogers had a ton, a ton. of time. A ton he was time. able to survey the entire field. Nobody could get home That's on true. the defensive line. And Anthony, this may not have even happened because before this play happened, this was the play on the field where it looked like they called him down, but this ball might have been out. You see Justin Finnessy rips the ball, and certainly the ball coming out. The ball's pretty out close. Pretty, it's close. Looks like he might have been down there. Shaw going to bring it out of the end zone. Looking for some room, and he's hit at the 16-yard line, so that doesn't give Oregon a lot of opportunity for anything offensively here. They do have three timeouts. Cal with one. I think Oregon's going to just run the football here. Probably get into the locker room with a six point lead. Yeah, you don't want to throw the football up in the air. Chance of an interception down here. There you see Demetrius Williams on the sideline, not able to go today. With that turf toe injury, must be just killing him too because his only chance to return home as an Oregon Duck yeah. during his career, this will be the only trip back to California. There's Demetrius. Well, it's, it's tearing him up inside that he can't be out there helping his teammates. And that's what it's, it's more like helping your teammate. You feel like you're letting your teammates down because you're not on the field. 43 catches for 539. And, and what I'm hearing from the doctors about the turf toe situation is you can't do anything except no, just rest it. There's nothing you can do. You can't, you, I mean, you, you can't ice it. There's not a whole lot of swelling down there because there's not a lot of muscle tissue down there. There's no magic trick involved. 
some of those injuries, you know, you think the guy's going to be down for the count. Yeah. Off to the hospital. Next thing he's up and he's running around, but right. not with turf toe. And so that will bring the first half to a close. And if you're an Oregon fan, you got to feel great about what you've done because you've got the lead. But if you're a Cal fan, they come to their feet because of a response drive to get some momentum going into the break. We got a great one here in Berkeley. 27-21. Oregon leads it over the number four California Bears. We're back with our halftime festivities right after this. Welcome back, everyone. It's time now for the Bymart Halftime Scoreboard Report brought to you by Bymart, your Northwest membership discount store, now employee-owned. Oregon leads this one 27 to 21 over the Cal Bears. California getting a late touchdown to cut the end of the lead there. A momentum touchdown at the end of the half. And uh, we've got a dandy here in Berkeley today. And uh, let's go down to Mike Bellotti, who was uh, headed into the side, into the uh, locker room. Let's go down to Bobby DeVitch, who caught up with him. I got the coach. Coach, obviously both offenses are in rhythm. Lots of stuff and piles and layers on this game, but just your thoughts about the first half. Well, I'm, I'm pleased with our offense. I, I feel like our defense is sort of Jekyll and Hyde. Sometimes they play awesome and, uh, you know, stop them. Other times they make it look way too easy. That's frustrating, but it's a, it's a game of offenses right now. Hopefully things settle down a little bit. We just need to keep our lead and, and make sure that we finish on top. 27 points in the first half. That's a pretty big explosion for, against this great Cal defense. Did you do anything different or is just running your stuff? No, I think we're getting great play from our kids. I think Kellen Clemens make a lot of great plays on his own. We talked about this being Kellen's game, and he, he needed to step up. He's doing a great job. He's getting great support from Terrence Whitehead, the entire offensive line. Uh, you know, again, and our defense has done some good things. We just we shot ourselves in the foot a couple times, made it look way too easy, and that's frustrating. Special teams has helped us a lot. I thought we should have the football, obviously, and that's frustrating. Good luck, second half, Coach. Thank you. All right, back up to you guys in the booth. All right, thanks very much, Bobby. A very excited and uh, intense Mike Bellotti. This is a big one. You can tell by the coach's demeanor. And make sure to join Jerry Allen and Coach Bellotti at the Axe Billy Grill Tuesday nights at 7 o'clock for the Duck Sports Wrap at the Downtown Athletic Club. They'll bring a player down, the player of the week. You get to uh, ask questions. You get prizes down there. They have some great specials for you. So bring the whole gang to the Downtown Athletic Club this Tuesday for Duck Sports Wrap. And we're back to Memorial Stadium right after this. Welcome back, everyone. Oregon leads this one 27-21. Some fans all ducked out, and about 10,000 Oregon fans have come into the stadium. They're making some noise, and it's been a lot of fun. What a first half, Anthony. I cannot remember a more fun first yeah. half to watch just as a fan than this first half here today. If you're not watching this game, you're missing a great game. I mean, two good teams going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, making plays left and right, great football. Let's take a look at the first half highlights brought to you by Oregon Community Credit Union. And, uh, boy, they got it going early in the first half. Cal came right out. J.J. Arrington got a big hole, and he went into the end zone. Well, J.J. Arrington up the tough running back, but he's been a little quiet since that point right there. Has been a little quiet, but I think the big part of it is Oregon is just they came right back and right down the field for a big response drive. Tim Day, a couple of touchdowns. There's one right there. And then Cal comes back, and they go right down the field. Well, that's what you got to do in a football game like this. If one team scores, you got to score back. Otherwise, you'll get lost in the shuffle. Kellen Clemens has got it going, though, as he hits Dante Rosario deep here on this play. Kellen right now with four touchdown passes in the first half. That, that's a guy being in his own. That's something that is. A guy playing just like he's never played before in his life. Ducks took the lead there, and then they expand the lead here on the little route to Marcus Maxwell into the corner, right into the corner where all the Oregon fans are. Kellen Clemens, you can see the excitement there, but Cal came back and got a touchdown right before the half. First half highlights brought to you by Oregon Community Credit Union, and uh, that was a big touchdown that Cal got, a momentum changer, yeah. and they get the ball first in the second half. Well, now it's going to be up to the defense to come back and shut Cal down. Cal has some confidence. They're rolling from that last series by getting a touchdown. Oregon's defense got to shut them down here. Let's take a look at the first half statistics brought to you by our friends at Budweiser, and uh, you see... Oregon's very balanced right now and passing yards, Cal with 190. A lot of those coming on broken coverages. Well, they are. I mean, the, the DBs for Oregon are not communicating well, but the rushing yards, 74 for Cal, I thought that'd be a lot higher for J.J. Arrington. You see that Oregon has controlled the ball, 19-26, almost two to, I mean, 
That's yep. unbelievable. 20 minutes to 10 minutes, that can play a factor in this game. Well, that's what you want. You don't want that Cal offense on the field. And what you have to do is keep the Oregon offense getting first downs. Halftime statistics have been brought to you by Budweiser. Grab a cold, fresh Budweiser. It is game time. And also by our friends from Bud Light. Here's Cal's last touchdown to pull this one to six. MacArthur gets into the end zone. But we have got a barn burner here in Berkeley in front of a sold-out crowd. We're back with more after this. Welcome back to the San Francisco Bay Area. There you see across the bay and into downtown San Francisco. The fog trying to creep in from the Pacific Ocean. And that's the view from atop here, Memorial Stadium, where about 62 or 63,000 fans. It's a big crowd here today, Memorial Stadium. That's beautiful. Joe, I saw that, that every day driving to work when I was playing for the Raiders. <laughs> yeah, well, you're stuck in traffic for three and a half hours, huh? Exactly. Oregon leading this one 27 to 21. Let's go ahead and take a look at some scores from around the rest of the country. Of course, 12:30 uh, game today, so not a whole lot out there. Florida State with a win over Duke. Virginia Tech and North Carolina. You know, North Carolina with that win over Miami last week, I think we all realize they're better than we thought they would be, but still. They're a good football team, though. Good football game. Yeah. Virginia Tech ex escapes with a three-point win over North Carolina today. And things not going so well at Kentucky for Rich Brooks and his crew, although we got a vote of confidence from the University Administration, Georgia, all over them today. And West Virginia, a win over Temple, 42 to 21. Those scores are brought to you by Bymart here at halftime. Ducks and the Bears, it's band day. So they have all these high school bands from all around the area doing it up for the fans here at halftime on a great day. Welcome back, everyone. Just about ready to start the second half. But first, I want to let you know about the Beavers and the Ducks being on the same team. That's right. I didn't misspeak once again. <laughs> Civility 04, benefit for the Oregon Public Elementary and Middle Schools. Join former Duck and NFL star Anthony Newman, who happens to be sitting by me right now, and former Beaver and NBA star Charlie Sitton, along with other Oregon and Oregon State greats, Thursday, November 18th, 6.30 to 11, at Hayden's Lakefront Grill in Tualatin. It's $100. Space is limited. Call 691-9111. That's in the 503. 503-691-9111 to reserve your spot for Civility 04 as you look down on Memorial Stadium, Anthony. That'd be a fun event, huh? That'd be a lot of fun. The coach is going to be there, a great alum from both sides, cheerleaders. It's going to be a great time, all for the sake of our children. And it's not really a thing where you get to tell jokes about everybody. No. This is about really coming together, even though it's Civil War week. It's doing things that try right. to provide for kids things that maybe we got when we were going to school that they don't get these days. Exactly right, and that's so important and, you know, for our kids today. Thanks to Saturn for the aerial shots today. Saturn airship high above Memorial Stadium. And Oregon will kick it off to start the second half, leading this one. And it goes all the way to the corner for Lynch, and he's going to bring it out of there. Out to the 10. Looking for some room. He's never down until he's down to the 25-yard line. Boy, he is slippery. He's going to be a good one. A true freshman. freshman. When J.J. leads, it's all his time to carry that football. He's going to be dangerous. So the Bears will head to the west here. More northwest, if you will. It's kind of a get turned around here. It's kind of a northwest. Isn't it northwest? Talking to my state. Yeah, kind of northwest. And so they will go uh, into the wind just a little bit, although it's been swirling, but just a light breeze today. Hasn't really affected the game at all. And they'll run the football for a pile pushing five yards out to the 30. That's what that was, a pile pushing. Adjustments, Anthony. We've seen what both teams have done in the first half. What sort of adjustments do you foresee? Well, you're looking at Oregon's offense. I think they have to keep spreading the football around. Give it to the tight end. Give it to the fullback. Cal's defense, they settled down. I think they found a niche. That's the Blitz Clemens. Cal offense, they look good, you know, right before halftime, throwing the football down the field. Ducks have had a hard time getting to Rodgers. See if there's some adjustment made there. As they run to Arrington again. Slips through. I don't know how he slipped through that pile for a first down to the 36-yard line. Maybe they want to reestablish their running game. Well, yes, I know they do. Jeff Tedford is all about the running game. And with a guy like J.J. J. Erickson, you have to give him the football. He's fourth in the country in rushing. He's so small as far as not small in size, but just 5'9", little powerhouse. 
finds a seam through that line and, and gets a couple extra yards. And Marshawn Lynch has come into the game now as Arrington goes to the sideline. Arrington already with 80 yards in the game. Now the Bears really spread it out. First and 10 for Cal at the 36. And they'll run it again. This is Lynch. And he'll fall forward for about two yards. Second down and eight coming up. Talking about that running game. Cal's going to, you know, J.J. Arrington, he wants to carry the ball about 30 times a game. He's not even close to that. And they're going to keep trying to establish the running game. The score is, what, 27-21? Very close ball game. You still have to run the football in this game. This is a big drive here because, remember, Cal was able to have the last possession of the first half and get the touchdown. And now they get another possession after the halftime. And so if Oregon can get a stop here, that would be huge and retain the lead here. Rodgers to the outside, has a completion. Down to the 50, and I'll tell you what, Anthony, that man that caught the ball was offside at the start of the play. Well, the referees didn't see that. And at the same time, Marshawn Lynch makes a great play. A little hitch pattern. When you got a running back and you have a safety cover on the running back, they say that that's a plus to the running back because he's going to fake out the safety in space. The official was trying to tell him you're offsides and kind of motioning him to move back because, you know, you can check yeah. with the official, but decided uh, that it was not egregious enough to throw the penalty. Cal in Oregon territory now to the 47-yard line. Ducks show the blitz, and here they come on the run. Still on their feet, and all the way down to the 40-yard line is Marshawn Lynch for a gain of seven yards. So Cal coming out with a, with a big drive to start the second half. You talk about a lot of good freshmen coming out last year. Marshawn Lynch is, is one of them. Cameron Colvin, Jackie Bates. I mean, these guys are true freshmen. They're playing in the Pac-10 and, and making a difference in the games. We saw Jerry Matson there trying to get a hold of him. We talked about him really being one of the keys to stopping that run, for him to fill those gaps. And yeah, if Jerry Matson has a good game, you'd expect Oregon would have a good chance to win. They'll run it again. Up the middle and diving forward for about a yard and a half. Looks to be about a yard short of the first down. As I think the Bears just want to occupy the ball a little bit, Anthony. Oh, they want to keep that hot Oregon offense off the field and give it to your guy, J.J. Arrington, or the running backs, have him pick up a couple, couple yards here and there. Coming into the second half, it was a 20 to 10 advantage in time of possession. And that included a couple of Oregon quick strike yeah. touchdowns. Third and one for the Bears. Going to run the option. Rodgers. Hit. I don't, I don't think he got it, Anthony. I think he's short a yard. Well, the way that referee's walking out where he spotted it, I think he is short. Fourth and one, and no sign that Cal's going to do anything other than go for it. I think he lost about a half a yard. And Cal is going to go for it on fourth down. Well, you look at JJ, I mean, look at Aaron Rodgers. When he runs that option, he's already taken two steps back in the backfield, running across the line, so he's not up to the line of scrimmage. Duck fans come to their feet. Fourth and a long yard. Ducks crowd the line. They run it and get the first down and more. J.J. Arrington to the 26-yard line. They did not want to give Oregon the football back. Well, that's all J.J. right there. He's running against a blitz. Backers and safeties are filling those holes, and J.J. has to find a seam, and he did. They were close to getting into him in the backfield, just couldn't quite get a hold of him. And a good back, Joe, won't let you tackle him behind the line of scrimmage. Second all-time in the season. At 1,200 yards for J.J. Arrington, first and 10 now at the 26. Rogers looking deep. He's got a man open, but he overthrows him. Well, that, that's twice now, Joe, that it's another long foul ball. It, it's another broken coverage by the Ducks in, in the, back, the back end. The linebackers in the, in the, uh, the secondary. You see Jordan over there on the side of your screen. That's designed to try and decoy. pull the D's up. It's a decoy. 
And well, uh, basically, he didn't have uh, he was it was a broken coverage. Anthony Trucks didn't didn't stay with J.J. Arrington. Second down and ten. Ducks really need a stop here. They'll throw the ball, and Jordan goes down. I think he'll maybe lose a yard. Joe, that's all on the quarterback right there. The quarterback has to give you a chance to run the football, called the run after catch. Well, you can't run the football when you're diving for a catch behind the line of scrimmage. Big third and ten coming up. Big third and ten. The Oregon fans on the far side trying to come to their feet and make some noise. You see Matt Toyina in the football game. Bears so far, two of six on third down. Rodgers to throw, has a man, MacArthur outside, short of the first down though. Ducks keep him in front. Aaron Gibson, Jackie Bates in on the stop, and Cal will come in to attempt the field goal. Well, that's a nice drive by the Cal offense, moving that football. I know they wanted a touchdown. Aaron Gibson did a great job of making the tackle in space on a receiver. Right here, George has some room to do something. Gibson keeps his feet moving, stays square, and makes a nice tackle. Tom Schneider is 5 of 10 on the year, 50%. This one is a 37-yard kick. It's on its way, and it is off the upright. No good. Well, Morgan did one, so, so does Cal. Right back at you, I guess. That's what they're saying. The upright is in play today. <laughs> Another look at it. Just didn't get it through. Six and a half minutes with the ball and no points for the Cal Bears on the opening drive. Oregon gets their first chance after this. Welcome back everyone. Kellen Clemens having a fantastic day so far with four touchdowns in the first half. Today he's making perfect passes. Yet he has some guys wide open. He has to get it to him, but he's doing that. Getting them the football. See right there, the touchdown passes. This one, again, I mentioned it. It was like a baby coming down. Yes, he threw that football before the receiver went to his break. You see Kellen here against Washington State had a giant day. He had 36 completions that day. That was second best in the Pac-10. And uh, six touchdowns he accounted for running and passing. He wasn't even awarded the Pac-10 Player of the Week that week, although he should have been. And that's when it really all started for yeah. this football team. Yes. Ducks lead it by six, starting at the 20-yard line. And they'll run the ball. Whitehead cuts it up, and a good game as he fights his way to the 29-yard line. Real nice game by Terrence Whitehead running the football. He just needs a little seam. He's that type of running back, Joe, that you tell the offensive line, you don't have to block the guy. Just, just stand in his way. I'll, I'll do the rest. Couple things offensively now for Oregon. As we take a look at the, uh, the play, Anthony, take a look at it. Well, you look at Terrence Whitehead, he's, his knees are moving, finds a crease, and keeps going north and south. Wanted to mention that Demetrius Williams has put his helmet on. He might try to get in the game, but Tim Day does not have his helmet on. There you see Demetrius. Got his gloves on. That's a good sign, so he might get a chance to go. But Tim Day isn't even warming up as Whitehead picks up the first down. So you got two of your big guns, and right now they're not in the football game, but Oregon's still been moving the football. Well, that's maybe why Demetrius Williams is trying to get back in the game because they know Terrence, uh, Tim Day is out. There you see them both there. Of course, the TK on the back of the helmet for Terrence Kelly. This would have been a happy homecoming, and uh, his father is here today. The Ducks, of course, that weighs on their minds as Oregon has a man down. Offensive lineman. Lander and Kelly on the sideline. Of course, his son was tragically killed before the season started. A couple of days before he was going to get a chance to come and play at Oregon. And so guys like Cameron Coleman and Demetrius Williams, the guys from De La Salle, that's weighing heavily on them as they return home today. Well, I think he feels good being here at this football game, seeing the kids that his son played with during the four years of high school. I mean, that makes him proud, and, and uh, he wants to be a part of it. And the thing about uh, Mr. Kelly is that even though his son never made it to Oregon, 
he feels a part of this Oregon football program, that he is in touch with it. And, yeah. and uh, those, those other boys, that the young kids of Colvin and Bates and Willie Glasper is trying to become eligible, uh, he still keeps in contact. He, those are now his kids. Yes, exactly those right. Those three boys have become his children now, and he's going he's gonna to work with those kids and help them get through at Oregon. And, you know, I mean, your heart just sinks and goes out to Mr. Kelly. What well, they've had to go through. It's nice to see him with a smile on his face because he's proud to be here with the other kids. They talk about Cameron and Jackie Bates being on the field. Very proud. Look, he's been with those guys for four years, four, four or five years. Another look at him there and uh, on the phone. Maybe he sees himself on TV right now. Maybe that's what it's all about. <laughs> so glad to see him in attendance today here near his hometown watching the Dale South kids play against the Cow Bears here in Brooklyn. First and ten for Oregon. Clinton's going to throw it, and uh, just one of the very few times Kellen has to put the ball in the numbers. Well, he had to get rid of that because of pressure. That's one reason why he has some problems connecting that pressure, but at the same time, you got to try to get your, a receiver a chance to run with the football. Throws it a little bit too much in front of him. Normally, that's an automatic execution for the Ducks on offense. So just one of those things, and now it's second and ten. Colvin comes to the near side, Maxwell to the far side. Little shadow creeping into the field. There's three on the play clock. They get it off, and they'll run it. Whitehead falls forward for just a couple on second and ten. It'll make it third and eight. Joe, what I, what I think Clemens is seeing right there is the man-to-man -man coverage where everybody is out of the middle. The backers are covering a tight end. The safety is covering another receiver. So if Terrence Whitehead breaks that run, there's nothing but daylight. And he's done that a couple times yes. today. A third and long they broke for a big one earlier. This is third and seven. And Clemens is going to go out of the shotgun. Here comes the blitz, looking over the middle, and too far for Nate Leo Broughton. Just out of the range right there, Joe, just out of the range. The Cal Bear defense did a nice job in that series. And these fans here sensing some urgency. Applauding the stop. Oregon's offense without Tim Day is definitely a little different, Anthony. Yes, it is. Dittman to kick the ball, and he kind of hits it off the side. Looks like it might hit the ground. It does, and it pops up. And the Bears will start at the 27-yard line. Dangerous play. <laughs> Big dangerous. Boy, I thought that ball was going to come out. Mixon on the recovery. Oregon has a couple of guys down. Another look at it. It almost hit the blocker. Can't, nope. It did hit the blocker. He kicked it with his foot, I think. So a great play by Mixon to get it. And the Bears will start now back with 6.35 to go in the third quarter. Got your heart rate up? I bet we do. Let's pause now for this word from our local stations. Ducks holding on to a six-point lead. Special teams have been all over the place today. Kind of wacky. Lots of crazy stuff going. Ducks tried two onside kicks in a row. Well, you talk about one, that's okay, but they did two. I was a little surprised at that, but you're trying to win a ball game, Joe. The first one was no good because they said they blocked the guy. The second one was close, but Cal actually got that. And then Cal fumbling on a kickoff. Oregon recovered that, scored on the next play. Have to protect the football. And you've had balls all over the upright as well on some kicks. Jared Siegel missed a point after, and the uh, Cal kicker hit the uh, upright as well. And also Jared Siegel running down trying to make a tackle, but getting called for a flag. <laughs> getting a late hit. <laughs> that might be the first late hit on a kicker, on a kicker in Oregon history. We'll have to check the record books. I doubt they keep it as a record. <laughs> the Cal offense, as we look down on Memorial Stadium, has not turned the ball over today. Again, that turnover was on special teams, and they'll run the ball to the outside. Lynch, that's in good pursuit. Boy, he's hard to bring down. In fact, I don't think he ever did go down. No, he didn't. 
it did go down. Marshawn Lynch and J.J. Arrington are two running backs that Oregon recruited very hard and lost the battle on. Well, and you know who they lost the battle to in that recruiting war is Ron Gould, the running back coach. He was a guy who I played with at Oregon. And Ron Gould is considered one of the best running or recruiting coordinators or recruiting coaches in the West Coast. He knows how to bring them home. Yes, he does. They call those guys closers? Yes, that they call yep. Them? Knows how to close the deal. Second and nine for the Bears. Rogers going to hand this one off, and Oregon there. But boy, I tell you what, Marshawn Lynch picks up four yards on a play that should have been stopped. He just will not go down. Well, when you have Devin Long on your back and you think you're down, Marshawn Lynch just kept moving his feet. He kept running in place. Marshawn's not a real heavy guy. I mean, maybe you just had to pick him up. And, and look at Devin Long. He's grabbing onto him, but he keeps moving his legs. So instead of third and seven, it's third and four. That makes a big dif difference. Officially five, between four and five. Now Rodgers at the line. He'll throw it this time. To the outside, wide open is Lynch. Out to the 50-yard line and out of bounds. And you can see that one coming. Well, that's a play out of the Oregon's playbook. But when you look at the playbook, you're looking at Jeff Tepper and Mike Bellotti. So you're looking at the same playbook. Right now, you send a blitz by Oregon. You send the running back out to the flat right away. It's hot route. A lot of yards right there on that play. Defensively, Anthony, when you're looking at that, is that a mirror situation, or whose responsibility is that? Usually the linebacker. If he's dropping into a flat, he has to try to get a little closer to the line of scrimmage, not drop so deep. First and 10 now for the Bears on the third down conversion. Jordan in motion. And they'll run it. Squeaking through for another five-yard gain. Is J.J. Arrington. Again, Ron Gould, the running back coach for Cal, he talks about J.J. Arrington. And they have a, a deal with the call, Yak. It's yards after contact. And this is what J.J. Arrington does so well, is he makes contact, but he's still getting positive yards. Sign of a good running back right there. Y-A-C, called Yak, yards after contact. Nearly to 100 yards. He has 99 on the day, averaging 158 a game, which puts him tops in the Pac-10. Second down, and we'll call it six. They'll run it again to Arrington, and he falls forward for three. I think it's something that we saw with Adrian Peterson in Oklahoma, where no matter where the contact is made, he always gets three or four more. Sometimes they break it. Yeah. But you hit the guy at the line of scrimmage, and they just fall forward. I mean, he just keeps moving the ball forward, and you have to wrap up, hold your, hold your ground with them. Another big third down conversion coming up here. Three of eight on third down so far today. Really spread out. Quarterback draw, possibly. Rodgers to throw to the outside. It's almost intercepted. And they're going to mark it up at the 39, which I think is going to be enough for the first down. Well, they're looking at that tempered offense, Joe. It's just a, a great offense because it's very quick passes. Can't get to the quarterback. That's a pretty good spot. And they're going to measure it. Although, considering what Cal did last time, I can't imagine they wouldn't go for it on fourth down, yeah. even if it is a little short. Right, they're going to go down. They're going to go for it anyway. Have we'll a look at it. That ball's thrown behind it all. Jerry Matson would have been right there. From my eyes up here, it looks like he's going to be about a, well, boy, it looked like he was going to be an inch short, but it came on back, and it's a first down. Well, what Cal's doing is they're stretching, they're moving this ball because they're moving all over, using the field, throwing the ball all over the field. And converting on third down, I mean, that's the biggest thing. Ducks had a couple opportunities there and almost knocked the ball down. Yeah. 3.28 to go here in the third quarter. As long as the first quarter was, the third quarter is fast. Very fast. Ducks have had one possession. Jordan goes in motion. Rogers going to throw it. 
Looking back across and some pressure. Anthony Trucks is there. Boy, that looked dangerous. It's a gain of three yards to the 36-yard line. I'll tell you what's scary when Aaron Rodgers scrambles. And he's, he's good enough. He's not a real fast quarterback, but he's good enough to avoid the rush and allow time for the receivers to get open downfield. That's what's scary. And Morgan has not been able to get to him with just the four guys. Good hit there. But again, the, the protection for the California offensive line has been excellent today. Devin Long has not been able to get off his man. Pelosi, the same thing. Chris Solomona. Now they're going to come with the blitz. Looking to the outside, and Jordan gets away. And he's going to get the first down, and the fall's on the ground. It's a fumble, and Oregon has it. Finally, they get the turnover. The Bears put one on the turf, and Oregon gets it. A big break after the Cows had another good drive going. Another good drive. Get no points out of it. And I tell you, Robert Jordan, he's trying to make something happen here. Yet he's a freshman, that's fine. Nice fake. Again, the run after the contact. But here, protect the football. Aaron Gibson does a nice job of stripping the ball out. Aaron Gibson never gave up on that play. That was the key. He got by it once, but he never gave up. Yeah. And that ball's out. It's a fumble. Good call by the referee. Ramon Reed getting on it. Now Oregon with the ball at the 30-yard line. Their second possession here of the second half. California with two turnovers. And that ball came out, but the whistle before the play, and it might cost Oregon five yards, but I think at that point they'll feel fine about it. Prior to the snap, full start, offense, five-yard penalty remains, first down. You'd rather it be five yards than them having the ball. Yeah, you're, you're, right, no, yeah, you're right. But here, Joe, we got to get to a point where the Ducks need to get to the point where they have to play smart football. Can't get hurt by penalties. Can't make mistakes. You're in a ball game right here. This is the good bird against a great football team, the Bears. I think the question, too, is the posture of the Oregon offense here against California. Clemens going to throw it. Looking over the middle and slipping down across the 30. On this turf is Cameron Colvin. Uh, I'm sorry, might make it Marcus Maxwell. And he'll pick up past the original line of scrimmage. It'll be second down and nine coming up. There's one player, Marcus Maxwell, that I think you really need to get involved in his offense. He's a big receiver, 6'5", about 210. Can jump over a lot of defensive backs. Runs great routes. And he's a fine blocker. He can really block away from the football. This quarter, Cal's had the ball pretty much the whole time. As we're at 135 to go in the quarter. Second and nine, ducks on the option. Kellen cuts it off, but this time he's diving for a couple. So another big third down coming up. I don't know, Anthony. You get the feeling like Oregon's going to have to score more points to win the game because Cal's offense... And Demetrius Williams is coming into the game, maybe with that in mind. So Demetrius Williams, his first appearance of the day. Well, a lot of times right here is a decoy, because everybody thinking about Demetrius Williams. Okay, but he's not really warmed up. And now the crowd really making some noise. The PA announcer asking him to do it, which is an unusual event. Third and seven. Little slant, Demetrius. Can't get a hold of it. It was there. Well, that's tough on a receiver to come in being cold, having sitting almost three quarters. And the first play you come in, that's a slant route right to you. Well, that's a tough situation. I mean, he should have caught this football, no doubt. I mean, that ball was right in his hands, but he's not running full speed. Looked like he might have turned his head downfield a little bit as Dittman now to punt. And this is a very high punt, but not very long. Fair catch called for, and taken at the 30-yard line, and that's where the Bears will start again. So the Ducks not be, not able to really move the ball here in the third quarter, but clinging to a six-point lead with 39 seconds to go. The Bears with it again when we come back. 
Welcome back, everyone. Oregon still leads at 27-21 here in the waning seconds of the third quarter. And fans, if you want to get to the UCLA game, you know it's sold out, but here's the way you can get it. They're going to pick it this week. You get two tickets from Pepsi and Dairy Mart. They're teaming up to send you and a guest to the UCLA game, but you get more than just the game. You get two tickets to the game, parking, hotel accommodations, and dinner for two at the Axe Billy Grill on the third floor of the Downtown Athletic Club in Eugene. And Great Duck Gear, head to your local Dairy Mart. Sign up. When I say today, I mean today, because you don't have very many more days to do it. Both Bruins are a scary football team. I mean, they know how to score some points. I think they're struggling today, but they're a very good football team. There's a beautiful shot overhead from the Saturn blimp. Here at Memorial Stadium, full house. Demetrius Williams got a chance to play, as you see across the bay, at the, the Bay Bridge, Treasure Island, Trans-America Building, and the fog moving in. Over Mount Tam there in the background. Getting a little chilly out here also. Getting a little chilly. Ducks had an opportunity to convert on third down, but couldn't get it. And now Powell will start at their 30-yard line, and they'll run the football. And J.D. Nelson may have saved a touchdown. There was nobody else over there. Yes, he did. And that's up to the safety to make that tackle. At the same time, it's up, up to that running back to make that safety miss. You know, clearly Oregon's offense now has gotten out of sync because they just haven't been on the field at all, Anthony. They right. have not been able to create some first downs. As that may be the final play here in the third quarter. We'll see. There's 13 seconds left as they come to the line. Looks like they'll get one more. But Oregon, after the explosion, just with 25 yards in the third quarter. And they do get the playoff, and they'll run it. And still loose. And it might go all the way to J.J. Arrington. Can they get to him? They do at the 23-yard line. So the final play of the third quarter is a big one. And I'm talking about a big one, because he looked like he was stopped. He's like that Barry Sanders, Joe. But you think he's down because he's only about 5'9", and he's not down. There he is. We'll give you another look at it when we come back. For the fourth quarter, Oregon leading 27-21, but trying to hold on against the Cal Bears. Back right after this. The shadows creeping across Memorial Stadium here on the campus of the University of California at Berkeley. Oregon leads it as we go to the fourth quarter, 27-21, over the number four in the BCS ranked California Bears. Oklahoma's having a hard time today, and thanks to Saturn for those beautiful aerial shots. But we're talking about a team, Anthony, right now, fourth in the BCS. If Oklahoma goes down today, they're one Auburn loss away from playing for the national championship. Yes. Oregon's got them by six with a quarter to go, 15 minutes away from victory. Well, they don't know that uh, Oklahoma's having some problems right now. They're just thinking about third game, but J.J. Uh, Arrington is thinking about taking us for six. Now, this young man, his legs are never stop moving. He's not down. I mean, you have, it's, again, it's called the yak, yards after contact. He hit four guys, broke the tackles, and ran for another 40 yards. He's going to get a good grade for that play right there. Aaron Gibson running him down, showing good speed against Arrington, who's now to 148 yards on the game as they announced the crowd of 65,000 here at Memorial Stadium. So he's close to his average. Fans want to remind you about the uh, State Farm Insurance Women's Sports Calendar. State Farm Insurance is a major supporter of women's athletics and uh, soccer against Arizona tomorrow, November 7th, 1 p.m. at Pape Field. And then women's basketball against the Sports Travelers Friday, November 12th at 5 p.m. at MacArthur Court. Today's Women's Sports Calendar has been brought to you by State Farm Insurance. Who are the Sports Travelers? They, they, they play that? sports and they travel around. <laughs> it must be pretty good. How's that answer? <laughs> it's like, you know, when my kids ask me a question like that, you, you just use it in the answer. <laughs> well, they're the, very, you know, they travel, they play good. sports. Very good. One of those exhibition teams uh, that travels around. And J.J. Arrington right now trying to get it done for Cal. You, know, you keep feeling like can Oregon hang on, but J.J. keeps bringing it. Well, you have to get him down. I mean, this young man, again, is so fast. He hits the hole just on a heartbeat, and then when you get there to tackle him, you have to hold on. You have to grab clock and squeeze. So here we go. Cal with the first and ten after the big J.J. Arrington run. This is Marshawn Lynch side-stepping and then being hit. 
Again, those Bears don't go down easy to the 20-yard line. They sure, they sure don't, and they run that football hard. And it's a little scary for the Duck coaches when these running backs touch that football. They're hoping their defenders make those tackles to hold on. Anthony, a lot of time left here in this game. Clearly, the 21-point spread the odds makers threw out there was absurd. Oregon playing a great game today, and uh, you feel like if they can hold them to a field goal attempt here that, you know, you got a great shot at it, but you never want to lose the lead against a team like Cal. No, Plays very well with the lead. Second down and seven. This time, Erickson's going to throw. A little pressure coming. Caught. And down. Let's see where they mark this one. I think it should be marked at about the 20-yard line. And they'll give it up to the 19. What I like about this defense for the Ducks is when they get in the red zone, excuse me, when they get in the red zone, they're protecting. They're not doing that, uh, giving up a, a touchdown pass on one throw. These are some hard yards this Cal offense is trying to get. Now the Oregon fans in the corner coming to their feet, trying to make some noise for their defense. Shadow creeping in on them. Third and six for the Bears. This is a big play in this football game. Rodgers to the end zone. Unbelievable catch. Jeff MacArthur, that's why he's one of the best receivers in the Pac-10. Eight catches for 121 yards and another touchdown for MacArthur. When this ball was thrown, I thought, no way. Oh, no way. And I like this. You take advantage of the rookie or the, or the, the freshman. You got a, a, a great player as a receiver going against a freshman. Big extra point is up and it is good. And California has the lead. Oregon has led for a long time in this game, and now they're going to have to come from behind to win it. 28-27 is the score. Aaron Rodgers to Jeff MacArthur, and the Ducks now have to respond. Welcome back, everyone. California now with a one-point lead, 28-27. Great catch by Jeff MacArthur. Oregon now trailing for the first time since halfway through the first quarter. Boy, Rodgers made a nice throw here. Just a rope. I thought it was too high. Well, well, Jeff McCarthy had to climb the ladder to get this football. Made a nice job, and Jackie Bates was in coverage, but he stopped his feet as a defensive back. You do not stop your feet. Can't happen. This is what happens when you do. McCarthy just coming up huge today. Eight for 121, two touchdowns. He's been a little quiet all year long. And you see the Carl's Jr. scoring drive. Five plays, 70 yards, 214. Today, he's come up big. And California with a one-point lead now. The difference, a missed extra point by Jared Siegel that went off the upright. Kick is high. It's going to be returned. Taken at the five by Kenny Washington, who gets out to the 20-yard line. And that's where the Ducks will start it. Well, now the Duck offense needs to respond. They've just been slapped. They need to slap back. Anthony, uh, you know, you talk about it in baseball all the time, from when a pitcher is pitching from the sun into the shade. Is there any effect in that in football when you've got a shade line pretty much right down the middle of the field? It can happen. Yeah, it can happen without a doubt. That's why you see sometimes the, the black underneath the eyes or the, or the mask, the, the, the visors, because there is a, a, a factor of seeing that, and there's a shadow. Anytime there's a shadow, you'll lose the football. Plenty of time left in this one, 13-19, although Oregon's offense only 25 yards here in the second half. And Whitehead with nowhere to go, and the Cal defense is fired up. Well, they're fired up, Joe, because the offense just scored some points. I mean, their, their offense is moving the football, and so they feel confident that they can go in there, and they want to show off a little bit. Adjustment-wise, Oregon's offense so explosive in the first half, not so far in the second. Are you seeing it as a defensive adjustment by Cal or Oregon uh, just not getting an opportunity to get some momentum and get some first downs? What are you seeing? I'm seeing a defensive adjustment by Cal by sending more linebackers to after Clemens, but at the same time, the Oregon offense is just not making plays. Here comes the blitz. Clemens going to go down back at the 10-yard line. It's 
say the ball was down. Ball was down at the 10. Third sack of the day. And again, you wonder where has the Oregon offense gone in the third quarter? Well, well and the fourth quarter now. Well, right here, we just talked about the blitz. I mean, Cal Bears are sending linebackers on every play to get the Clemens. Clemens doesn't have any time to throw the football. So now it's third and 20. The crowd's going to be going crazy. You're back on your 11-yard line. And so what's going to happen here? Clemens going to throw it. This time, good protection, a lot of time. Now the backside's coming. Gets a completion and hit right before the marker at the 29-yard line. Maxwell holds on, a gain of 19, but short of the first down. Well, the positive on that from Oregon offense is getting from being backed up. You have some room for your punter to punt the football now. I mean, it's a great play by the offense. Maxwell runs a, a nice, deep route. He's running deep. Now he sees Clemens in trouble. You come back to the quarterback. Nice big target. Takes a shot. Holds on to the football, though. Matt Giordano is right there. Now David Dittman is back to kick it. And they need a big punt here, and they're going to get a very high punt. Comes down to 30. And Mixon will go there. A flag comes in. We'll see what the flag is here in a second. Again, usually when the referees throw a flag in that area, it's blocking the back, back or, or, or holding. It is on the Bears, so they'll move it back a little bit. But Oregon's offense, well, number one, the defense can create something. They've done that before. But Oregon's offense with just one first down here in the second half. During the run back, illegal block in the back, return team number seven. Ten-yard penalty from the end of the run, first down. That'll take it back to the 24. And we will take a timeout here in Berkeley with 11.03 to go here in the fourth quarter. It's anybody's ball game. Ducks and the number four Cal Bears. We're back after this. Welcome back, everyone. That's Tightwad Hill. Way up on the hillside here outside of Memorial Stadium. There's a green shirt up there. Not reserved for just Cal fans. Hey, uh, fans, here's something that uh, I think would be a great gift for anybody that's serving overseas in the military or working overseas or anywhere in the country, really. The Ozone video audio subscription service on GoDucks.com. You get broadcasts of Duck Sports Wrap, Duck Calls, and all Oregon football games. The Ozone offers live video and audio of select games and interviews, coaches, shows, practice reports. Right now, if you sign up before November 14th, six-month subscription is 55 bucks. So go to GoDucks.com for more information. Ducks trailing it by a point. With 11.03 to go. And there's Tim Day with a jacket on. And doesn't look like he's coming back. No, he's done. What a big loss that is to the offense, too, because the offense struggling so much. Now Cal going to try and pound it away. After the 30-yard line, to gain a six on the play for J.J. Arrington, who I'm very impressed with. I don't know that I'd put him right there with Adrian Peterson, but pretty darn close. Well, no, right. I mean, he's, he's you're talking about two different backs. J.J.'s a lot smaller. J.J.'s uh, Ontario Smith, isn't Exactly he? right. Not as quick as uh, Ontario Smith, but a more powerful runner. Mm -hmm. I mean, he runs hard. Ontario Smith, now with the Vikings, he's more of a uh, Barry Sanders stop-and-go type. Mm -hmm. J.J. just runs hard, and, and you have to really grab cloth and bring him down and hope for help. See if the Bears try to just work some clock now with the lead. And one, they've had a lot of success running the ball, so why stop it is this time Arrington has not a lot of places to go, but they'll give him forward progress to the 32-yard line. Joe, he's that type of runner that uh, he just, he's mad at the world. I mean, maybe he feels like there's no respect, and he runs that hard. And as a defensive player, I remember going against guys like that where you had to really bring your lunch Use your legs, use your back, everything to make a tackle on a guy like that. Third and two 
Under 10 minutes to go here now for the Bears. Rodgers going to throw a little out almost by Jerry Matson who took a chance on the play. See Aaron Rodgers with a big smile but almost went the other way Anthony. Well Jerry Matson was trying to get a break on the ball and he did but Aaron Rodgers throws that ball so fast Jerry Matson couldn't really get there. I mean he really wasn't close. He should have just went for the tackle. Stevens makes the catch. Craig Stevens and the Bears have a first down now to the 46. And they'll run the football. Five more yards to the 50 and across to the 49. Well, it seemed like the defensive line for Oregon has disappeared on this running game. Because when a running back gets five yards or six yards a pop, that means he's getting past the defensive line, getting to the linebackers. And the Oregon defense, they're probably getting a little tired now. They've been on the field the entire second half. Oregon with one first down in the second half. Nice look there as we reset it here at Memorial Stadium. Well, Cal with a one-point lead. Sorry about the Joe. Somebody on this defensive unit needs to make a play. That's why I, uh, Jerry Matson going after yeah. the ball. I think people probably feel okay about that. Here's Harrington trying to get to the outside. Does. And works his way down inside the 40 to the... 36 yard line and now they're just chewing it up and I think it's got to be a fatigue factor Anthony well it's a fatigue factor but also at the same time on that last running play it's about discipline when somebody has the outside they can't let him get outside right here you got JD Nelson coming he needs to come from outside in and then Jackie Bates he can't let the guy get outside of him that's a responsibility that's all that is another first down for the Bears they have completely dominated here in the second half. There you see Coach Aliotti. Bears over 17 minutes here in the second half. Oregon's had the ball for just under five. They'll run it again. Harrington will pick up four more to the 32-yard line. Harrington now up to 173 yards on the ground. Well, this is what Tedford wants. To give the ball to his best running back. And I know Mike Bellotti is wondering, how can we stop this young man? Jerry Matson has a, a blitz, un, untouched, unblocked, and misses the tackle. We had a spectacular first half. Fireworks galore. It's kind of like 4th of July when everybody goes to bed. You get all the fireworks and it just all stops. <laughs> and since that time, it's been a quiet football game. The Bears content to ground this one out, and they've been doing so. Here they go again. Harrington for another four yards. Make it Marshawn Lynch in the football game now. Takes it inside the 30. And a third and two coming up again. Even if Don Pelham, the linebacker coach, he's telling us guys, come on, get up in there, wrap up, have some fun. Don't, have, don't put your head down. We're still in the football game. Going up by one point. Got to be getting tired, you would think. They've been on the field the entire half. Bears are 6 of 11 on third down. No good, Arrington. Over the pile for the first down, or close to it. He's close. See where they mark it. He's close. Now the question is, do you go for it you kick the field goal? I think you go for it because Oregon hasn't stopped the running game. To see where the actual mark is once they unpile it, where the ball's placed down. Well, it's just going to be real close. I kind of think he's probably got it, Anthony, and they'll go ahead and measure. Fans are booing because they think he clearly had it, but the mark might not have been very good. But he had a full two yards to get there. Well, again, they're going to run the football anyway if they don't get this first down. So much at stake in this football game for California. And it's a first down, and so much at stake for Oregon as well. 
for Oregon, the goal is a little different. And if they do end up losing the game, they still have a chance to get on to the Holiday Bowl yeah. because Cal would move up into a BCS game likely. So the loss doesn't necessarily hurt you a ton as, as it relates to bowls and all that business. But being this close to the number four team in the country on the road makes you want it that much more. Well, you're right. And again, there's six minutes left on this clock. It's still a one-point game. I mean, these Duck players are not thinking about, hey, we played them close. We got to play to win this football game. Somebody has to, you know, look at themselves, not anybody else. And try, I got to do something here. There's a run it. Arrington, crunch down at the 25. And the game just going away so quick here as we go under six minutes now to 552. Well, what really hurt the Ducks in this second half is the offense had disappeared. I mean, your offense is not giving your defense any rest. Now, there are three downs and out, you know, not converting the third down for first downs. And, and that really hurts the defensive unit. I think of a couple of things being big in that, and that Tim Day not able to return. Yeah. And Demetrius Williams returned for one play on a third down on a slant play yeah. when he hadn't played the whole game and wasn't able to come up with the catch to continue the drive. And since that point, the Bears have just work this one out and they've had the ball the entire time running the ball again Arrington hit hard and goes down after a two-yard gain the clock goes down under five minutes now well now you get into third and long and you know what they're gonna do throw the ball to Jeff MacArthur I mean he's he's a go-to guy in offense seven of twelve on third down the last one was a, a two conversions ago was that big touchdown the go-ahead touchdown to MacArthur right from about the same spot on the field Ducks will put an extra defensive back in the game MacArthur is split to the top of your screen to the far side the only guy in the Sun that's MacArthur and now Cal will have to use a timeout they're getting down on the play clock all the way to 4.30 to go in the football game. Take a quick break. Big third down coming up. Let's pause now for this word from our local stations. You're watching Duck Football on the Oregon Sports Network. High above Berkeley as you look out over the town. Very congested. Tough to get in here to Berkeley, but 65,000 have. That includes about 10,000 Oregon fans. And the Oregon coaching booth, Nick Aliotti, Trying to come up with a big third down stop here to give the Ducks a chance to win the game with the football rather than just try to get a touchdown and tie it then with a two-point conversion. Yeah, you're right. They have to hold it to a field goal here. But I'm looking at number six, Jeff MacArthur, one-on-one -on -one against Jackie Bates. Jackie oh. Bates had to stop him yet, Joe, and why not why stop? He's up there all by himself. Jackie Bates, and now another stoppage. And Oregon uses a timeout. I don't think they like seeing well, that was one on one. That was Bilal who called that timeout. Bilal didn't like that. It's like, no, this is the wrong defense. Had such a long conversation during the timeout there, and then Cal came out with a little different formation than they yeah. had shown, and they had Jackie Bates on MacArthur all by himself. They probably just. Switch that up, put Aaron Gibson over there, huh? Well, I'm surprised that Aaron Gibson hasn't gone over to, to MacArthur, but at the same time, you know, you look at the other, Robert Jordan's a good receiver for, for Cal. Hey, fans, attention, kids 12 and under. For only $20, you can join the Junior Duck Club, get an official T-shirt, membership card, and a coupon for admission to an Oregon home event, including men's and women's basketball. Pick up an application at the Casanova Center, Carl's Jr., or visit GoDuck.com and become a Junior Duck. The legend of the lightning yellow. Not a lot of yellow down there today as Oregon's pulled out the all-white uniforms. Their fans, though, bringing in the yellow over there in the sun. And Anthony, you get to this point in the game now with 4.30 to go. 
If your defense can hold them here, then your offense, even though they only have 31 total yards in the second half, still the offense is going to have a chance with the ball to win the game against the number four team on the road. Well, without, without a doubt, at the same time, someone on offense has to step up because Tim Day and Demetrius Williams, they're not in the ball game anymore. They're out. 302 yards in the first, and Oregon has put Aaron Gibson up on MacArthur all alone. It's a one-on-one -on -one matchup at the top of your screen. Here goes Rodgers, a little pressure, looking down, and this one is thrown incomplete. And a flag comes out. A flag comes out very, very late. And it's a killer because it's an automatic first down. That is a killer right there. Now this ball, Joe, was this ball tipped? They're discussing something here, right? Maybe it's on the offense. Well, if, if they're throwing it against MacArthur, he couldn't have made that play anyway. He was going the opposite direction. The ball wasn't tipped, and I, I, I never understand why there's got to be a big conversation. Either it's a penalty or it's not. There is no foul on the play for pass interference. The pass is the rule, not catchable. And if you're Cal, you're like, well, why'd you throw the flag in the first place? And a ball comes down between two receivers. Well, it wasn't, this ball wasn't thrown towards Jeff MacArthur. It was thrown towards Jordan. But right there, it sailed a little bit. So that's why he was thinking he was throwing the flag. Wow, that's a tough break for Cal. I'm not so sure there was a lot of contact there in the first place. Right. I think the tough break is that the guy actually threw the flag and then changed his mind. So the field goal attempt to come on, and Oregon likely will have a chance with the ball to win the football game. 40-yard attempt, hit the upright earlier on the day. Kick is up, and it's going to the right, and it is no good. No good. And Oregon can win it with a field goal or at least take the lead. Can they get the offense going? And in the second half, even though Cal's been moving the ball, some of their mistakes have kept Oregon in the game. The mistakes are killing them, Joe. And when you play against a fo good football team, you cannot make mistakes. When Aaron Rodgers is over playing, guys, guys are wide open for touchdowns, you have to connect. But at the same time, a missed field goal. Also a fumble by Jordan in this half when they were moving the football. That was back in the third quarter. Ducks have only had the ball for four and a half minutes this entire half. Well, if they've been holding everything back, it's time to do something right now. That's what the Ducks fans are saying. Move this football like you did in the first half. What an opportunity for the Oregon football program, which certainly is on more solid footing per se than the California because their winning has started very recently. Yep. But being on the road against the number four team in the country in the BCS rankings and also the AP rankings, the ESPN poll has them at number six. And a team on the verge of getting a chance possibly to play for the national championship. And here are the Oregon Ducks with the ball, with the chance to get out of here with a victory. Well, it's almost like last year, Joe, coming from behind uh, to win the football game. And you know, Tedford and his group was thinking about, we're not going to let another one slip through our fingers, guys. And you can sit there and say, if it wasn't for the upright and a missed extra point, that's true. That extra point had been made, Oregon would be tied at 28 right now. Cal also hit the upright on yeah. a field goal. Yeah. They missed the field goal here. It's just the way the game goes. And now everybody in this stadium is on their feet. This is going to be tough doing. Coach Bellotti this week said his team is tough. We're about to find out just how tough they are. <laughs> Deafening noise here at Memorial Stadium. Clemens pressure hit and sacked. Their fourth sack of the day. Well, look, you got defensive linemen coming unblocked. Joe, that's a problem. I mean, that's a mental problem. 
with the offensive line or the tight ends trying to block. Usually the tight ends are trying to block that corner. But you can't let defensive linemen get there untouched and hit your quarterback like this. And they're coming every play, Anthony. It's a loss of nine on the play. They're just coming on every play. Not even getting in the down stance. Clemens, this time with time. Maxwell takes it out across the 25 to the 27-yard line. And it'll be third and five, or make it third and six from there. When Clemens has time, he's going to hurt you. And those receivers get open. But Clemens hasn't had any time. So a big third and six with 3.33 to go in the football game. Boy, it's loud right now. Rivaling any noise you'll hear at Austin Stadium. Cal trying to hold on to Rose Bowl, even national championship dreams. Three on the clock. Ducks run the option. Clemens puts his head down. Has the first down to the 35 and barely got the snap off. Barely got the snap off and he barely got the first down. And that's a gutsy call right there, an option. Option with the quarterback, third and seven. Must have been in mind that they were going to go for it on fourth. I mean, this is a great call when it works. <laughs> when it doesn't work, people are going to get all over and say, why are you running the option in third and seven? Oregon's second first down of the half. Clemens now going to go out of the shotgun. A lot of cushion being allowed the Oregon receivers. Plenty of time. Clemens going deep, looking for Weatherspoon, and it's almost caught by both receivers. Well, tough route there. Tough route. Good job by Weatherspoon not letting the defensive back catch their football at the same time. The defensive back, I think Mixon was all over this play. Second down and 10. It's nervous time here in Berkeley. So much riding on the outcome. Is Oregon late to get the play in here? Down to 10 on the play clock now. Anthony, they might have to use a timeout unless they hurry. Seven on the play clock. Six, five, three, two, one on the play clock. They get it off. Clemens steps up, tries to run, and he goes down. It's going to be third and 11. sacks now and their towel goes again sending the linebackers you don't want to give this young man a lot of time to throw this football you wonder where would Oregon be with Tim Day in the game but he's not available Demetrius Williams not available third and 11 Here comes the pressure from the backside. Clemens throws it over the middle. Caught by Weatherspoon at a first down. Near the 50-yard line. And now with 2.11 to go. Oregon within sight of the goalposts. Well, if you're a Cal fan or a Duck fan, this is a great football game. It really is. I mean, two tough teams throwing blows left and right. A lot of people in this stadium probably have heart attacks right now trying to watch this football game. One of them's right here. <laughs> First and 10 at the 49. Clemens, a little quick out. But Coleman couldn't bring it in. Second down and 10. What's the longest field goal that Jared Siegel's kicked? 59 yards against UCLA two years ago. This year, he's got a 51-yarder in there. Ducks really to have a legitimate chance at it. Need about another 17 or 18 yards. Yeah. Ducks are going into a slight breeze here. Now the referees will stop play. Oregon still with two timeouts left. Cal with two as well. Not sure what the issue is all about here. Might want to reset the clock. Was an incomplete pass.
Jared Siegel's got the leg to do it if they put him in position for it. He had a long one against Stanford that got over the upright. That's what they're looking for to get him in position to kick this field goal. He can make it from over 50 as he did there in the Stanford game. Well, you know, you talk about Jared Siegel. Now, that's his job to kick this ball through the upright. Going down there making tackles, no. Kicking these long kicks, winning the game for his team. That's what they're looking for in Jared Siegel. The Ducks still need 20 yards to even have a shot at it. They've got a second and 10. Let's see what they're saying. 201. 201. So it goes back up to 201 on the clock. Joe, this game's so good. But the people up on the hill are standing up. <laughs> <laughs> One of those games you hate that anybody would have to lose. Second and ten. This crowd just intense on the Oregon offense right now. Maxwell in motion. Here comes the blitz up the middle. Here they come. Screen. They couldn't get it set up again. And a flag comes down. I think they think that the receiver got tackled. It's pass interference. Well, tackled. Yeah, you can. Terrence Whitehead was clapping his hands. We're going to have a discussion about it. Again. You don't want them to have too long of a discussion. And they call holding on the defense, which is not pass interference. Happened behind the line, I guess. That's why. But it's an automatic first down and holding. 10 yards. Defense number 76. 10 yard penalty for the previous spot. First down. He was holding Terrence Whitehead. They were trying to run that screen, Joe. And again, Cal knew it was coming. And you can't see it. There's Whitehead there in the middle getting going down. To the 41 yard line. 157 to go. First and 10. Clemens down the middle, looking for Colvin, but he's not there, and it'll be second and ten. Well, this way you want to find a guy who can step up and make a play on offense, because your two best players are sitting on the sideline. Is it going to be Cameron, or is it going to be Mar Marcus Ma Maxwell? Joe, at the same time, I look for Terrence Whitehead coming out of the backfield. Ducks again late to get the play in. Clock is already down to 10, the play clock. Second down and 10. They get it off. Here comes the blitz to the outside. Tipped up in the air. Oh! Almost intercepted. After it went off the hands of Cameron Colvin. Anthony Oregon is so close here. So close. <laughs> the Bears are so close to getting this pick. Right here, this ball should have been caught by Cameron. And again, right here, Harrison Smith almost made a great play. Would have been a touchdown. Would have nobody over there. Third and ten. Not close enough for a field goal yet, Anthony. Ducks got to pick up some yards here. We'll get a first down with 149 to go. And Kellen's going to use a timeout. And why not make sure at this point? Yeah, you're right. And really, the next first down is everything. Because a first down not only means you can work the clock down, you're in field goal range if you get the first down. Right. Well, this is crucial that the Ducks call the right play. I mean, it's all about what coordinator calls the right play. What do you like? What have you seen from Oregon that works today? Well, I like Dante coming out of the backfield, using a, an out and up down the sideline. I mean, Go they, for the home run ball. The home, yes, just like it happened at, at, in Stamper when he went for the home run ball. They had uh, Keith Allen wide open down the field. Of course, you got to protect the quarterback in a situation true, true. like that, and there have been five sacks by the Bears today. They could go back to that delay to Terrence Whitehead that they ran against Stanford. They've ran a couple of times here today. But you don't have Tim Day, you don't have Demetrius Williams. And 
That's a big deal. Last time these two teams got together, you had Tim Day and Demetrius, who mo both made giant plays at the end of the game. Of course, you remember this last year, the lights went out. California scored after the lights went out and led by two scores, but Oregon came back with Tim Day and Demetrius Warner. Exactly right. And those two guys are sitting on the sideline wishing they could be in the game. That's why somebody else has to step up. Right, right here, Derek Whitehead. So here we go, Oregon, third and ten. Here come the Bears from the backside. Clemens steps up, delivers too far, and a fourth down's coming up. Well, this is the ball game right here, Joe. Looking at this replay, trying to get it to, I think, Cameron Colvin right here. Just a little bit too far. Or Maxwell outside. One play might decide the football game, and here it is. Fourth and ten. Blitz is coming. Kellen throws it. It is dropped! <laughs> Keith Allen, a senior wide receiver, wishes that he can back up time. And it's nice to see his players go through his aid. Because right now, Joe, of all the people in the stadium, he feels the worst. This ball is right on the money, wide open, so wide open. Drop the pass. When that ball just hit him right in the hands and hit his chest. That's a close one. And you don't want to see a young man, I tell you, this hurts a young football player right there. It really does. Because he thinks he's lost the football game. And he didn't lose the football game. Had nothing to do with that drop pass. 1.35 to go. Oregon uses uh, a timeout, I believe, unless they're just slow on piling them here. Ducks will use their final timeout. And the Bears now will just have to kneel on the ball and it'll be over. And to come that far and be that close and to have it come down to that play, I don't think it gets any more heartbreaking than that. No, it doesn't. You know, and it's tough also when Oregon doesn't have their top two receivers in the ball game, Tim Day and Demetrius Williams. And again, you sit here and you look at this football team. They scored 28 points or 27 points on a very good football team. Had a chance to win the game. They got to keep their heads up high. But you go into these games to win these ball games, not to play a good football game and, and hope you win. So close. Ducks would have had the ball down around the 20 yard line. There's Demetrius Williams. Taking the eye black off. Now, at the same time, when you look at that, and you talk about Keith Allen trying to make this catch right here. Okay, he's wide open, running the corner pattern. I mean, the ball hits his chest. Anytime a ball is going to hit your chest, as you know in the Oregon receivers, it bounces right out. Now, Joe, they're still looking at the bench. There's Coach Campbell, the running back coach. It just, it does not get any more heartbreaking than this. No, but you look at this point, there's still a minute 35 left in the game. If Oregon would have scored or something, Cal still would have had time to score, score some more points. Well, you'd think it, it, whether or not Allen would have, probably wouldn't have scored a touchdown on that play, so Oregon still would have had the ball and been able to work it down for the winning kick. But it doesn't matter now. Then you go back and you look at the offense, Joe, in the third quarter. Why did they wait to the, you know, the last part of the game to move the football? You know, they got to move the football during the third quarter and in the fourth quarter. 
Third down for the Bears coming up. And they'll call a timeout with one on the play clock, which will take the game clock down to 52 seconds. So there is a slight chance that Oregon would get the ball back if they can keep Cal from getting a first down. Depends on how quickly the referee would reset the ball, yeah. but it's going to be only a couple of seconds at the most. Well, now you take this game, Joe, and, you, and there's Ron Gould, the running back coach, done a great job with the running back for, for Oregon. Got with the glasses and the hat on. Done a great job with that with that Bears offense and that running program with Arrington being one of the best running backs in the country. Time now for our State Farm Insurance Player of the Game, brought to you by State Farm. And today's player of the game is going to be J.J. Arrington, who had a big day. 25 carries, 184 yards, and in the second half, pounding away, not letting Oregon get very many opportunities. Pounding away hard, and a guy like J.J. Arrington running the ball hard. I mean, it's, it's hard to bring him down. You think he's down right here like a Barry Sanders. He scribbles out to the left, right side and runs about another 30 yards. Today's player of the game has been brought to you by State Farm Insurance. As you see his numbers, 25 for 185 and a touchdown. Cal should feel very fortunate today, Anthony, <laughs> to escape a gift. And the Oregon Ducks. And that happens in football games. You get a gift every now and then. Third and four. And a flag is down. And they have the first down, but let's see what the flag is. You don't ever get the time back, so let's see what the flag is all about. It would be a first down. going to be on Cal. Cal. But again, you don't get the time back. No, you don't. But if there's some time on the clock, then it's better than nothing. Ducks had a big game plan. Big game plan came out hard. And Scored early and often with a big first quarter. And Jared Siegel's only missed three extra points in his whole career. Yes. And when you go back and look on the game, people are going to look at that, but all the opportunities, you know, it's, it's more than, like you said, Anthony, it's more than just the drop pass. Twelve men participated in the play. Fifteen-yard penalty. 12 men. Oregon doesn't get the time back, though, so down to 48 on the clock. Third, third down and long with 48 seconds. They're going to run this one down. The yardage could matter, and it just matters here. Let's go make a play. Nothing you can do. So the clock is moving right now after the penalty, which... Nothing you can do about now as they run the ball, and... That's going to be the last play of the ball game. Don't have to do anything more than that, and now the game is over. Although I think the Oregon sideline is saying, now wait a minute, the clock should not have been starting well, after got... their penalty. And so the officials, I think the officials are talking about, they might have to take everybody, no, the officials are going to run off the field. Off the field. The cannon has gone off the final cannon here. And California escapes 28 to 27. An absolute heartbreaking loss for the Oregon Ducks here today. Welcome back everyone as the sun starts to go down behind the fog of San Francisco Bay. It was a great effort and it came down to a couple of plays. But there are no moral victories for this Oregon football program anymore, Anthony. No, there's not. I mean, these games are, are tough to come by, but the, these guys got to keep their heads up. They had a nice game. They have to finish, though. You have to finish these ball games. Make sure to join us next Saturday when the Ducks host the UCLA Bruins in Oregon's last home game of the season. Check your local listings for the game time in your area. 
for our produ producer director Tim Lay, Anthony Newman, and the rest of our Oregon Sports Network crew. I'm Joe Johnson. It's a good night from Memorial Stadium in Berkeley, California. Once again, our final score, California 28, Oregon 27. This has been a presentation of the Oregon Sports Network.